Hello everybody, welcome to Riptide! We are here in beautiful Sandusky, Ohio on day one of the first major pack. Holy crap, dude. This is amazing. This is so cool. We're back. Oh my god. It took forever. It took forever. It really a year and a half. It really did. Yes, I gotta say big shout out to the Riptide staff and just Many staff, they've been enforcing masks, you know what I'm saying, making sure everybody stays hand sanitized yeah. up, all that wonderful stuff. Yes, I'm so excited to be here, Cody. Yeah. It's been so damn long. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so, so excited. excited. I'm, I'm ready, ready to cast, cast doubles. doubles. That, that doesn't, doesn't normally happen. happen. Doubles, doubles we got for day one. Uh, so day one's going to be doubles and spot strike a little bit later in the day. Obviously, single starts tomorrow, then wraps up in top eight on Sunday. Just reminding you, in case you forgot how tournaments work, because um, Lord knows it's been a long time. Riptide 2 was, remember, uh, we, we had the schedule for last year. That's right. And then they had to get canceled because of everything going on. So really, this is just amazing, you know, for, for one reason. It's just getting to this event next. Specifically, all of the huge 100%. I didn't think it'd be really fun to swim in September. I'm like, it's kind of cold in the Midwest, but yeah. you know, the weather's actually perfect this weekend. So, if you're in the surrounding area, well, obviously, you won't be able to come. But if you at least want to come and get in the pool with us, you can do that. That's free to everybody if you pay. But yeah, definitely come through, y'all, and be sure to stay with us in the chat, man. Coney, while we're going to lead you on this journey here for the next two hours, I'm a big doubles advocate. Anybody that knows me knows that. A little back and forth from squat strike, but doubles, though, you got me. You don't like squat strike? Come on. I'm a freak of nature. I love squad strike, really? bro. I love it. Yeah. Well, so you play a lot of characters, so it makes sense. That's true. That's true. Sense. Yeah, not having a main helps that. But yeah. coming up first, we got Jut and Lemon T. Jut actually uh, from Panda. He's he's on our social media team. Yeah, going to play Incineroar. Pretty strong Incineroar player. Meanwhile, on the other side, we got Vemzar and Exalted. Wolf Incineroar against Corrin Byleth. That's right. Uh, anime feet versus a lot of fur. Yeah. So, I mean... You know, do what you want with that information. Pick your poison. That's yeah. right. <laughs> one or the other. Yeah. This is actually going to be a good one, though. Uh, I think, you know, all four of these characters really, you know, kick off a lot of matches in a major way. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, with this being like early doubles, you get to see, uh, you know, teammates kind of try things out. You know, combos that probably won't work in a more conventional environment. You're like, you know what? That 0 to 80 combo that we laughed that <laughs> one time, let's run it. Yeah. Okay, I thought he was actually going to pick random, but no, we switched off. Yeah, I feel like uh, at this point you're going to see a lot of people sort of at, at day one of doubles. You can see a lot of, uh -huh. like you said, sort of those labbed out combos. It, it, uh, it's A lot of these things are just sort of developed in a basement somewhere. People try to figure out what the best strat is to shave off stocks very quickly. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that's what you're going to see very early on. Yeah, no doubt about it. It seems like the early shot right now is kind of the 2-1v1 type of format. That's a tale as old as time. We have yeah. seen that happen oh so many times. But, of course, the name of the game here is Doubles with Breeds. Team Synergy, you're going to have to tap into that. And at this low percent, all four of these characters can combo into each other really well. Yeah, low percents are going to be really big across the board. Uh, all these characters have guaranteed throw situations into other stuff. You can see Jut and Lemon T having a situation mid, uh, trying to beat up on the corner in 2v1. Doesn't quite pan out, but doesn't matter because Byleth is gone. Yeah, and that's kind of the tricky part about the Swordsman. They don't have the uh, you know, the quickest buttons up close and personal, so to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and trade blows with somebody like Incineroar, you're just biting off a lot more than you could probably chew there. But yeah. the great thing about being a Swordsman doubles is that it really doesn't take much for a follow-up. I literally just throw you, and you just jump in the air and flip the C-stick and yeah. follow-up. You get free damage basically no matter what. You can see right there. Right now, red team is pretty firmly ahead. Jut losing his stock, but oh my goodness. You can see the uh, Corrin actually, that should do it. Yeah, not going to be able to make it back. Oh, talk about the save of a sentry. And, uh, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, not worth it. Yeah, easy come, easy go. I was going to say, that was a really good, like, uh, like edge guard there. I yeah. Mean, to use, you know, the neutral special because you know Corrin likes to use back here to, like, push him towards the stage. Yeah, I was looking pretty close, but not quite enough. You can see right now, Lemon T still with three stocks. It's still pretty fresh, man. Yeah. 115, not especially high for that stock. As long as he just, like, chills under the platform. Ah, uh, but he got hit by the pin kick, so that's going to do it. Red team still very strong, very far ahead. Yeah, you hit him with the three Cs. The Coney's commentary curse, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Ooh! Yeah, he said anime feet. Here's the furry feet right here, right? Claws and everything. Oh, wow, stage wow, spike wow. too. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Yeah, and this is just like one of those examples where certain characters might be whatever in singles. I mean, say what you want about in center word, but in doubles, this character kind of moves up a little bit just because of stuff like that. Yeah, the extreme characters in that way do tend to do better. It's really weird. Um, I think some characters like Luigi or Little Mac, not really because they are just so immobile. But like Incineroar, 
Yeah, he could just follow up so easily on his opponent. You can see right there getting a back here at 85. The punish game is just unreal. Yeah. He's kind of his own team combo in a lot of ways at those lower percents. And then, of course, like the higher percents. I mean, he's just a powerhouse yeah. truck. So it's like. You see, Juck got all six kills, too. Oh Jeez. Jeez, man. That is an incinerator classic. Yeah. But you know what, though? I mean, when you're team with a character like Whoop, especially played as well as, you know, this one here. Yeah. I mean, he didn't really do anything, like, out of the ordinary. I mean, you know, nair around a little bit, you know, yeah. use your neutral special, keep resetting, you know, people that way, like, when they try to attack, you mess their timing up, and Sinwar can get in there, get their hands on you. So, yeah, I mean, that was just, I was asking for the team combo synergy. I got, like, not the synergy, like, in the combos, but we did get, like, people on the same page. So I'm, yeah. I'm cool with that. You got some follow-through. I mean, we saw the wolf throw into the Incineroar down air. That worked perfectly. It just really, really comes down, down to Wolf, Wolf is, is able to do a lot of things. He can play on point and he can try to do as much damage as possible. He can, he can also do a really good job of just disrupting. That's right. Like if somebody's trying to gimp Incineroar, oh, yeah. off the side trying to get them, he can shoot the laser, he can find a way to get over there, and even if he's not hurting them, he can threaten. That's right. If you eat a smash attack on the side of the stage against Wolf, you might die at 70, 80. Yeah, and I'm actually glad you brought that up because one thing I forgot about was that both characters on the red, well, I guess soon to be blue team here, both characters, actually, I don't know what color we're about to be. <laughs> they both have pretty lackluster type of recoveries. I mean, depending on who you ask, yeah. you know, they take them a pretty considerable amount, but they're really more like attack base coming back to the list as opposed right, to like yeah. getting back safely. But they did a really good job of covering themselves, especially versus two swordsmen who can just get out there and again swing on these two. So, fresh out the gate right here, a low limb whip. But I'm seeing some better team synergy right now on the green team. Yeah, but I always get weird when, uh, when two players in doubles just totally swap characters. It just sort of suggests like, maybe they're a little bit more casual, maybe they're not as like deep into, cause like if you play in doubles and you're trying to win, you pick that one character, right? You both have your thing. You see Jut on the side going for the air dodge a little bit too far. Maybe this is what they're used to though. Yeah. I mean, maybe, uh, you know, Joker Mario was the play all along. Yeah, who knows, man. I mean, both of those two characters very, very strong in singles and doubles. I could only imagine what they could do with each other. I mean, Mario has been a threat in doubles literally since well, I was going to say since Brawl, since Smash 4. So it ain't yeah. been that long, but it's been long enough, damn it. I'm tired of getting thrown into stuff. Yeah. Oh, trying to get Incineroar off on the side. Mario will be better at that than, uh, you know, who he had before, who I believe was Corrin. Right. You can see right now, Blue Team is struggling just because Jut did lose that stock early, but he does get the back air. And he's going to get two, I think. No, he's able to survive. Huge forward air off on the side. Jeez, man, talk about going deep. But that's what you have to do, man, especially if you're somebody like Jut. A pretty lackluster start here to this double set, but you know, like they always say, man, it's not about how you start, it's certainly about how you finish. And there's the throw right into the up smash. They're starting to sync up a little bit better here, Coney. I like this. Yeah, it's looking a little bit better. Jut right now at 104. Really comes down to him being able to hold that stock, but you see Arsene is out. We're going to see if uh, Vimzar or Exalted can get that stock away. Lemon T is getting hit on the side, and you can see Joker doing the correct thing, running to the left side of the stage. Not going for the Wolf, who is recovering, getting that forward smash on Judd. Yeah, that's good doubles one-on-one -on -one right there. And Judd almost had like a That's So Raven moment because he went for the one jab to kind of throw him off because I think he expected him to go for all three so he can punish. He was like, let me just go for the one jab and see if you're paying attention. Yeah. And lo and behold, Joker's like, me and our center are always paying attention, sir. Yeah. It's a good heat check. Okay. You can Speaking see that. Yeah, that like back this. throw, yeah, just so disruptive. You can see Judd waiting for the punish not going to happen. There's the back throw. Everybody's going flying. But unfortunately for Jutt, mostly his teammate, but it is pretty much even here. Jutt does have 50, which is not especially high, but you could see Mario there going crazy with that jab forward smash. Yeah, and this is why we don't do the two 1v1 things, because yeah. in doubles is one thing, but singles, not every character is on the same level, man. Ah, uh, and there's that recovery gimp. You can see it there, the downwards guns stuffing Incineroar's jump, and now it's gonna be a 2v1. Not good right here, Wolf. But certainly combo food here on the menu. Roxy's playing pretty well right now, and this is actually a good, a pretty Ooh. okay spot for Wolf. I don't want to say a good spot, but it's better than Incineroar in a 2v1. At least he has footwork here to maneuver around. Yeah, you're, you're a little bit more mobile. Uh, his air drift is sick. I mean, like, it's not ideal to be in a 2v1 at all, yeah. but if you have to be in one, look at him. He's actually d dominating both of these opponents here. It's the power of the, of the fur, man, I mean. Yeah. Say what you want about it, but it's coming out here in a major way. Back row, no up smash. Nice, I almost said good roll. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't say that, but in that case, that was a good roll from the ledge. 
What's interesting is I feel like neither of these two characters really have good setup throws into a KO move. I mean, Mario obviously has board throw, but I don't know. I think Lemon T is in a pretty good spot. He just keeps dash attacking them over and over. And it's tough, man, because I move across you up. Oh, gets the up smash a little off the mark. Can I get a, oh my God. Is, this is not a good time to showcase some spaghetti. Back row. Oh, oh. Oh gosh, I don't think these guys are, uh, I don't think they know how to handle this wolf. No way he's gonna win this 2v1, dude. Ortho, yes, has to fall through the flood. Dr. E guys. Oh, that should do, no, oh. he didn't get it. No way. Oh no, we're gonna see fourth throw back on the side. Fireball hits, does not beat the jump though. What's Mario gonna do here? At a certain point, back throw will kill if he's close enough to the side. But if he gets too thirsty with these, yeah, he's dead, he's dead. That's a 2v1 win for Lemon T. Holy go, crap. Man. Yes, and I mean, I just felt like what Mario's looking for, I like it in a 2v1. Because obviously now you're stuck in the middle. It's like yeah. up smash covers a good area around Mario. There's a good chance you might roll, roll into him. Like wanting to get out the 2v1, but in a 1 one I hate to say this, we're gonna have to engage with Wolf a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And Wolf's a killing machine at later percents. I mean, he has a back row as well, but the ash attack was just so hard to read. If it's gonna stop in front of my shield, if it's gonna cross me up. And it not only combos, but it also kills. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think what, what it came down, down to is they got the 2v1. They got, they got, they got a little, little overexcited. They got, got a little nervous. They got, they got a little, little you know, fancy. And because, because that, that Wolf's just, just able to beat him up over and over. I mean, like, he, he should, should not, not be able to dash, dash attack that, that much, much, right? No, absolutely it not. just it felt, felt like he was just kicking, kicking all, all over the stage. stage. All it took was one shield, and, and that would have been fine. fine. They got a few grabs that could have landed the smash, smash attacks. Um, but a lot of it's just inexperience. And you see Lemon T taking advantage of that, winning the 2v1 pretty cleanly, pretty solidly. That's right. See, everybody knows how to like play singles, and everybody has a generalized idea of how to play doubles. And this is no disrespect to you know the team that just lost, sure. but like those last second moments, I know two v one like comebacks are super hype, but honestly, it really comes down to the two people that you're stuck in the middle on. If they don't know how to like KO with each other, if they're like tripping over each other's feet, you know, yeah. hitting each other, there's a good chance you're probably gonna win that. Yeah, yeah no question. So. It means that uh, Jump Limit you're going to advance on a double force. It's just pools. Uh, we're pretty early on. There's still losing track for the other team. There's a lot more Smash to be played. We got another set coming up for you guys very shortly. Like we talked about earlier, doubles is right now. Squad Strike coming up later in the day. I assume it's closing today, right? Yeah. Probably going all the way through. Yep, yep. And then when everybody came to Riptide, either in the Twitch chat or wherever you're viewing this from, Twitch chat or here in the venue, single starts, I think, tomorrow, like fresh in the morning. So. Yep. Yeah, but we got to get through the fun stuff, okay? This is still a water park event. We still yep. came to have a good time. You're in the Midwest, for God's sake. We know how to have... I'm sorry, I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> we like to have fun. We don't really know how to have fun sometimes, but we're going to make the best. You do your best. Know. You do we'll your do best. best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do our best. And there are multiple streams, guys, all throughout the weekend. There's BTS Smash, which you're on right now. BTS Smash 3, and then another one. I don't remember what the third one yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, I was actually going to let you take it away. I was like, I hope Tony doesn't <laughs> that. Uh, it, Maybe it's two. Maybe it's BTS it's, Smash 2, you know? I mean, that would make sense. Really tough. Yeah, they're a really strong organization. They probably got a couple. They're doing Rivals and Splatoon as well. So it's the Water Park Combo Classic. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I don't know anything about Splatoon, but I pretend like I do when I come here. I'm like, yeah, man, you better ink that dude. So what, what move was that? I, I've never played the game once, so it's just like I watch it. I have no idea what the hell is going on. You it's know, exciting, yeah, but yeah. I don't know what's happening. You, you know, know what, Arm, or, uh, Rip Fighter are going to run ARMS, too. Good. Yeah, yeah. They should. They should, yeah. Excellent game. Yeah. They did it at the last Smash and Splash. It was like a major. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was like a huge thing there. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of things going on this weekend. Hope you guys stay tuned to all of it. Doubles is trudging on here. We're going to have another set for you guys very shortly. Yeah, I mean, like I said, man, I'm having such a great time. It's been so long since I got to commentate in person. At yeah. home was cool. Not gonna lie, commentating like business up here, underwear on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, that's cool, but I gotta be back in the venue. I gotta feel the energy, man, and I gotta yep. be back with my commentary brethren, bro. This yep. is an honor to do this again. It was so funny. Like, every time you guys saw a commentator with like a button up or something like that, we were always wearing basketball shorts. Definitely. I'm telling you, it's, it's like, it's true. Yeah. None of us were ready, no. so it's. It's a different world out here now. Yes. I gotta actually wear pants. Yeah. You know? Hey, they look good on you though. Thank you, yeah. thank you. He's yeah. the jogger. I yeah. like you, I like you better in pants next to me. <laughs> if that makes you feel <laughs> good. Idea. Good idea, yeah. <laughs> so I think the guys are warming up now. We're gonna have another set coming up for you very shortly. And uh, we're gonna rock with you for the rest of the day until double should close today. Yeah. I would assume. 
Um, uh, yeah, I would hope so. I yeah. would hope so. And I'm just, I'm sort of wondering what the teams are going to be because, like, I feel like now in singles but also in doubles is the opportunity for people to be able to really sort of uh, start their own legacy and, and open a new chapter in their ability to, you know, sort of come out swinging at Riptide. And I think these guys are coming out swinging. I think this is an actual set we're starting off Is here. it? Is it? Because this ain't Jet and Lemon anymore, so I don't no. know. I think we're going to get it set up. Either way, we got two Bowsers on screen against Simon and Palutena. What weird teams here. Yeah, but I guess that's the beauty of uh, early pools at a major event. You get to see some of those more unconventional characters. Those. Yeah. Yeah, this can't be a match. There's no way. You think so, Tony? If it is, these Bowsers are struggling. <laughs> this is tough. You can see both Bowsers, only one stock each. On the other side, two stocks for Politana and Simon. I don't know, man. You know, I actually had a, I actually had a lot of questions about the state of doubles because, like, since we've all been at home this last year and some change, have, like, the top players really been practicing doubles? For them, is it even something that's really worth practicing? I that's mean, they're just question. so damn good, you know? Yeah. Because, I mean, singles online was already some... I almost had it. I almost cursed. Sorry. <laughs> but it was already some some BS. I can only imagine what Dubs online was. Yeah, I don't think anybody practiced that at all. That's a really good point. I, I, I am curious to see what the level of play is going to be like. Because I do feel like uh, doubles is its own game. Mm -hmm. And if people haven't practiced it, are people going to be ready? What team is going to adapt the fastest and be able to, you know, sort of come back to this kind of environment on the fly. Oh my god, they hit into the axe. Well done. Yeah, that They're going to take uh, game one. That was sexy. I, it was that, you think that was game one? I assume so. Oh, it's Louis Money and Sen. Okay, okay, that's who it is. So they're not using their actual characters. Okay. Uh, Louis Money, if he is on Palutena, that is a character he tends to use a lot. Sen using Simon, which I've never seen before. Yeah, I was going to say, I know Sen actually has a pretty good Palutena as well, and a pretty yeah, good yeah, Rob yeah. too. Pretty good Rob. Yeah, that's a, uh, I'm going to be honest, that's a dangerous-ass combination of people right there to be teaming up here at Red Tide. Yeah. This when you thought this tournament was about the fun, you bump into Send and Louis Money in bracket. You can see now they're just both going random on this next one. And maybe they did for the last one, too. Looks like it's going to be Pichu and Daisy. Uh, I couldn't tell you which one's which, but maybe we'll figure it out as we go. That's right. All righty. Double up throw. <laughs> that was nice. Okay. Now this is actually uh, obviously a dangerous team right here for Double Bowser to have to go against because, you know, Peach, of course, is a combo killing machine. Same with Daisy slash Peach as well. I mean, with Bowser being such a big body, it's very easy to pass this guy back and forth, both yeah. Bowsers at that. Yeah, you saw Bowser just passing to the other Bowser there by accident. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to do, even your teammate's gonna hit you quite a lot. You can see one Bowser off on the left side, gonna eat that back here from Daisy. Not quite enough to KO, but that up, that, that thunder there for Pichu will do it. That's right. You see 109 here. Okay. The other Bowser is off on the side. Oh my god, the down air, not quite enough though. And you can see Daisy with an SD of 55. Yeesh. Oh, yeah. That's tough. Very scary spot to be in, too, off stage. Again, you know, Bowser is one of those recoveries where, like, it goes a considerable amount back to the ledge. But, I mean, you got to also have your jump. And with two characters like Pichu, especially Daisy, they can spend literally all day and then some out there on you. Yeah. It's like, how are you supposed to get back to the stage? Again, another back air. Multi-hitting attack right there on Bowser. Not the best position of being in the world and just up smashing up underneath the platform because you know what, Coney? Why the hell not? Yeah. Honestly, as Bowser, it sucks too because you can't save the other Bowser. Bowser yeah. is not great at disrupting sort of these team combos against their, you know, teammate. You're just gonna get knocked again. You can see they're down in stocks, but they're doing okay in percent. Pichu is so crazy light. Being at 60 against Bowser is you know, not a bad spot to be in. No, absolutely not. I mean, one command grab, literally yep. one just about anything on Pichu, being one of the lightest characters in the game. If not, the, Pichu the lightest, right? Yep. Yeah, Pichu being the, the lightest character in the game. You know, you can't lose too many neutral exchanges versus Bowser. I guess that's the beauty of doubles, like where you falter a little bit. Of course, Daisy and Pichu come in and help you, as you can see right there, Coney, yep. speaking into existence. Oh, my God, I love that board air there for Bowser off on the side, getting rid of Daisy, and right now, they're doing okay if they can hold the stocks, but it's not gonna happen. That forward air will do it. Two stocks left. Oh, he stole the stock right before he died. That's tough. Yeah, that, that's the Rodney Classic. I'm yeah. good at that. You see well. Pichu uh, going for loops. You see the 
back air is not quite as uh, experienced on these characters. But and the I, ideas are there. Definitely. And I like the, okay, yeah, I like the parasol. I also like that little up air, too, from P2, just to kind of reset Daisy again. Yeah. Okay, down tilt. Has to fade away towards the ledge of the stage. You don't want to get too crazy at the ledge, though. P2 is on the horizon. This becomes so risky because any attack that you try to hit one of them with, you have to commit, right? Like that forward throw, you're standing in there for so long. There's the forward air, 114. Not going to kill yet, but uh, you wait can a, see Hold up a, a minute, Coney. Coney, wait a damn minute. Now just hold on a minute here. This is absolutely doable. Forward tilt at the ledge would do it. Uh, some kind of grab. Is he, he's not dead, though. Yeah, not yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. Closer to the ledge, and he might be in some trouble. I like the down tilt at the ledge in the forward air right off the right side of the stage. Are you kidding me? Another 2v1 comeback? Uh, is this the well, Riptide curse, Tony? Bro, they gave it away. They got cocky, and they let it rip. I mean, you saw Daisy way off on the side trying to get the kill. Now, how serious do you take this? Like... You just you're you're dicking around, right? Yes. You went you yeah. you went double random. Mm -hmm. You lost the game. Do you go serious now, or do you just go double random again? I feel like now you talked about earlier a character switching doubles and like how very telling it is. Sure. Two players of their caliber switching. What does that tell the two players that just beat you? Obviously, they don't have the resume that you have, but they're still looking to win. And now yeah. you're like, oh, we just forced them to switch. We got this. Yeah. Mentally, we're in your head. I heard a Piranha Plant. I did hear Piranha. I think I heard Palutena Piranha Plant, which are both oh. characters that uh, Send and Louis Money use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, this is real. Uh, that plant is not a joke. Send and Louis Money both using these characters to great effect. We'll see how they do against Double Bowser. Yeah, comboing Bowser just got a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, it just got a hell of a lot easier. The up B right there. I mean, even something as simplistic as Jab from uh, Piranha Plant. I think Jab is like frame two or something crazy. Yeah. Like, Bowser don't want none of those problems at all. Yeah, on, and especially in doubles, I feel like, oh my god, yeah, this is tough. Honestly, in doubles, I think Plant really could come alive too, because you really just are able to follow up so easily with your opponent or with your teammate. Uh, vertically, you have the you have the spike ball, you have the poison blast, you have so much stuff that you can do with Plant to really deny an area from an opponent. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, that's kind of just in the character's DNA. Then looking at like up smash as well. One of the strongest up smashes in the game. Pretty decent sized hitbox as well, too. So, I mean, you know, Palutena, you get the wild hair of just literally four throw right yeah. into Prada Plant. That's a KO at higher percent. Okay, up tilt, very smart. They're supposed to swing for the coverage. And, okay, got got a little too handsy there. That's all yeah, right. A little bit too risky, but well done saving his teammate there. Oh my God, that forward air off on the side is gonna get rid of Louis Money. Right now, four stocks to four, but the percent tells a different story. You can see both these guys very high. Big? Oh, my God. Oh, he saved him. Oh, then, and then he air gave dodge. it up again. What? Okay, he's going to save him again. Ain't no okay. way. All right. He, third time. Three third saves. Time. Can we get it. it? Third. Oh, Everybody dear. gets three. I don't, he can't kill him, though. No, absolutely not. Good damage. That was a lot of Bowser feet there in one spot, though. Yeah. Another down air. Are you coming with me? Absolutely not. And here's the thing. Yeah. Plant can save Palutena three times in a row. Yeah. Easily. You can't say Bowser as Bowser. No, you, you can't cannot. go down there. No, you can't. You gotta just suffer. That's tough. That is the Bowser curse, man. This is tough. I mean, it was looking doable for a little bit because you know there was a point in time in the match where both the stock sets were even. I was like, well, Bowser's in that red percent. You know what I'm saying? That means they got a little raise to throw on their behalf, and we've seen how that kind of fared for them in our last game, but. They switched to some semi-serious characters. They're not having that here. All it came down to was that that Bowser bomb. I yeah. mean, the the Bowser side looked good, right? It did. It did. It, it looked very close. And yep. then he got saved once. He got saved twice. He got saved three times. That stock did not get lost. And because of that, I mean, that's a lot of momentum lost, you it know? Because he was he was very low. He was at like. 20, 30, I think? Like, yeah, somewhere in that ballpark, I'm yeah. pretty sure. He was mad low. If he would have lost that stock, I think it would have done a lot for them. But unfortunately, Louis Money and Sen, just different breed. Yeah. Looking strong. They're going to continue on. I wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, maybe top eight, top 16 for sure. All their characters, very strong singles characters. And, of course, in doubles, Dr. Mario's a menace. Very, yep. very tough to deal with. Yep. I, I will say that I don't know how much Louis Money is going to stay on Dr. Mario because later in doubles, I'm sure the caliber of player, We'll certainly know how to deal with Dr. Mario off stage. Sure. But for the time being, right now, while we're in like kind of this middle pack of players, Dr. Mario, pretty much all of his characters are just gonna 
kill a lot of stuff. Man. I think he's just gonna Rub probably killer. just like Palutena all the way through, just because mm. like Palutena is like yeah. you could slot her in anywhere. Um, I would assume when push comes to shove, it's gonna be Palutena Ness. Yep, yep, yep. But until that point, they get to do whatever they want. So yeah. uh, we'll see how they progress on. A lot of good teams in the bracket. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, like everybody has been sort of finding out if they want to play with the same teammate they used before. Mm. Um, I mean, Mars and Light have been such a phenomenal team, but I don't know if they're here. I know Mars is here. I don't know I did if see Light. Mars. I did see Mars. Yeah. I didn't see Light. Mm. Yeah. So there are so many doubles teams that have been sort of phenomenal from behind and the time skip, and now I'm like, after a year and a half, do you stick with the same people? Yeah. Are you going to try new stuff? Um, new combinations, new characters are in the game too. It's we been haven't a, even touched that. There's been some characters who have not seen an offline tournament at this stature. Yeah. I think Min Min has not. Uh, Banjo? Min Min, Sephiroth. Banjo did. Sephiroth, yeah. Uh, None Steve. Of, yeah, literally everybody from Wave 2 didn't see an offline event. So. Yeah. Min Min top 8, Riptide, are y'all ready? I'm sure they'll love that. Oh, I'm, I know you'll love it. I mean, do do I, you like Min Min in this game? I know you like arms. I do like arms. Okay. I do like arms. You know, Min Min is, uh, I don't, I think people freaked out about her. I think she's good, but I don't think she's like. Yeah, she's I don't not think OD. She's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I feel that way about Pyramithra too. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think wow. they're strong, but I think I think here's the thing. Okay, I'm listening. I think Pyramithra, and we'll see at this event, right? Okay. But I think they're just very easy to pick up. They're very okay. intuitive. Yeah, you're right. They just sort of make sense, mm. and I feel like because of that, yeah, they're gonna get better. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the counterplay will also sort of outpace. That's right. And no doubt they're top ten. Mm. More than that, I don't know. A lot of people said top three, top one. Oh, I what think. the hell? Top one, bro? I, I think those people are being a little, uh, I don't learn, know. Learn the matchup, all right. Yeah. yeah, what the hell? Top one is OD. I, I'll give you top 10, though. Uh, yeah, definitely, top yeah. 10, definitely. Top 10, for sure. And what's funny is, like, I, I just see Pyra get kills for free. Yeah. Like, people do not shield the down air. And no, it's they don't. like, if she's above you, you know what she wants. That's mm. the only reason she's out there. Yep. So. Uh, give it some time. We'll see how the character does. I... I'm interested to see how some players do. Obviously, uh, Leo has been working out of Pyramithra. Yes. Uh, Spargo, of course, had a great showing at Summit. I believe he's here as well. Mm. A lot of people picking up the characters, so we'll see. I'm excited to see, man. You know, when I see some of these players and, like, just how great they've been offline or online, excuse me, there's always the talk of what's going to happen when we get back into the offline sense. You know what I'm saying? Can they still hang with some of the best? Can they still run doubles? Can they do this? Can they do that? I mean, lo and behold, we just seen Louis Money and Sen. Now, granted, they might have played because they're from better regions, so they might have had a couple regionals offline to kind of warm themselves back up. Yeah. But rest assured, friends, if they were nice before online, they're going to be damn nice after. All right. Yeah. Everybody's itching to get back in it. Yeah. And I, I do think that we've had some events where, you know, offline is sort of back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at, at, at a lot of local levels, um, some people have been playing the game, and some people, I think, are realizing that, like, it, it, it you got to – Warm back up to it. You, you gotta unrust. You I do. mean, yep. we've seen some performances for players that were historically dominant offline. Hmm. After this, it seems like they haven't really kept up, and they're gonna have to sort of ramp back up to it. Um, interested to see if that happens here at Riptide, just yeah. because I feel like there are so many players that may or may not have taken this seriously. You know, I mean, Riptide would be the ultimate proving grounds for that. You know, Summit was actually also just big shout to you for Summit, bro. Y'all oh, handled yeah. Summit was some good you. shit. Y'all handled that. It was a good time. Yes, that it was, was a great awesome. time. Thanks yeah. to BTS Smash, uh, you know, beyond the Summit for hosting us. I got these joggers. Check it out. Summit oh, joggers. Let's go. You want to stand these up? Nice. I don't think they can yep, see. Yep, oh, yep, they, yep, they, can. they can. They can. They can. Oh, yeah. You can see these. Yeah. 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 yeah these are great. These are great. Thank you, Summit, for fancy, the joggers. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Um, but, yeah, Summit was amazing. It was a great way to ring it back in. I felt like it was a little serious. Like, it was. Usually, I feel like Summits are more laid back and chill. But this one was like, since it was the first one in a long time, yep. it had to be a little bit more yeah. serious and real. It's know, almost so. like the same ingredients that are supposed to make those type of environments chill were also the same ingredients that made them intense. Because it was yeah. like, in any other sense, just, we've been traveling all year. We got one where we can kind of chill at. Right. But this one was like, we haven't done anything in a year, in almost two years, and the best players in the world are literally under one roof. Yeah. It's time to whoop some ass. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. Speaking of whooping some ass, friends, welcome back to Riptide if you're just tuning in. Coney here, Rod here, and we got doubles, okay? Say what you want about it. I like doubles. Coney is kind of whatever <laughs> about it, but we're going to get through this, okay? And, yes, we just seen Louis Money and Sen. They put on a really great performance. The great thing about doubles early on as well is that we also get to see different characters. Yeah, you know, that's Later a good on, point. you know you're going to see Wolf. You know you're going to see Joker, Pally, whatever. But early on, Piranha Plant, the Belmonts, 
I'm here for that. Yeah, I feel like early on in a tournament is when all the fun stuff starts. You can see two teams coming together now. Mm -hmm. Cloud and Ike are being hovered. They do lock them in yep. up against Martha and Daisy. So a lot of sword rep here. Daisy's got to figure out how to uh, really find a way to maneuver around all these disjointed hitboxes. No doubt, man. Feels like it'd be a challenge. Yeah, Hawk and Lioness, I feel like I know these names. I just cannot remember for the life of me where they're from. But Hawk and Lioness, oh, wait, 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 wait. Are they? Are they twins? I think they're the twins. Yeah. There's a few sets of really nasty twins in Smash, and they're one of them. The other ones are um, Lucky and Low. Lucky and Low. That's yeah, right. I was going to say, the Wario. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they say the first thing that goes to memory. I'm getting old up here, y'all. <laughs> We've been in this a while. But yes, let's go ahead and get it here. A lot of swords here to be swung in this game. Starting on PS2. Huge forward smash there. Oh, my God. That forward smash was enough to get rid of Hearth. Well done there. Yeah, and this, again, you got to watch how you land sometimes in doubles. Oh, my goodness. And, yeah, we asked for the Team Synergy a few sets ago. We certainly have it now. Ike's up smash has been uh, on the receiving end of Team Combos literally since Brawl, man. That up smash is just so damn terrifying in doubles. It's just huge. You can see there it is, the follow through there. Getting the back row into the up air, even on the side. It looked like you wouldn't be able to follow through, but these guys definitely have practiced this and have been teammates for a while. You just don't get that level of synergy the first time. You can see it right there. Yeah. He's ready for the throw. No doubt about it. Uh, yes, this Ether, but that's uh, okay. That works, I guess. Ether's a good get off oh move my God. and then get off of my ledge there down air. I like that. Yeah, not even 100% on either of the blue teams. Right now, it is six stocks to two. Good lord. My lord. Yeah, they're just they're having fun right now. They're, they're, in, they're in training mode, Tony. Jesus, that's tough. Nomad oh. and GC Fox are struggling. Yeah, Linus and Hawk right here are just uh, they're just a different breed of doubles players. Yeah, don't even. Okay. You know what? That was a thing. That happened. Oh, my God. All right. Well, that's a six stock. Uh, and again, like you were saying, that'll sometimes just happen in uh, in in the first day of majors, right? You're yep. gonna see things like that. Um, yeah, you, Linus and uh, and Hawk not at all concerned. They're no. just like that was fine. That yeah, was, yeah, this is okay. It's Jeez. the power of the dangly earring, man. You put the dangly earring in, you can do anything. <laughs> That's all it is, man. Yeah, Linus and Hawk definitely cut from a different cloth here, but I don't want to take anything away from their opponents either. You know, I. You know what, I'm going to be nice. Sure. Sometimes sure. you just need the one game to shake off the rust. That's yep. my excuse. Sometimes I need the whole tournament, though. Well, some but some, <laughs> players need, some players need a, just a match. By the time you drop out, you're like, bro, if I have one more set, uh, I got to play one more uh, game. I'm warmed up now, guys. When's the real bracket? It's like you just went 0-2, Rod. Right? That was the real. Ah, uh, yes. Is that indeed. triple limb? You yeah, know? what the? Give so, me one more chance, bro. Yeah, it's a water park tournament. I, need, I want more games. Right? <laughs> so we got the next match coming up. Uh, Linus and Hawk sitting pretty. Six stocks, not even 100% on either of them when that game ended. Yeah. So we'll see what uh, Nomad and GC Fox have to bring to the table, but it's got to be a lot. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot. A lot of factors kind of went into that match. You know, the first one is, uh, you know, Daisy Peach is going to struggle a little bit versus Swords and Doubles. Um, they're a good Doubles character themselves, but, you know, Swords, you know, it's just not Daisy and Peach's forte. Yeah. Um, on top of that, it's very, very easy to combo with two Swordsmen and Doubles. Again, I mentioned it before. I'll say it again. Uh, you know, you get the opponent in the air. There's a lot of times the swordsmen have throws that stay pretty close to the body. And so because of that, they can either go for the follow-up themselves or their yep. teammate can handle it pretty well. But it's like we got to switch off of uh, Ike here. Looks like Rob is here to play. You know how much we all love Rob. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, this is our final destination for this event. Mm. It's not FD. It's themed Omega. Oh, wow. Which is neat. I do like that. I like, I like a little different. Yeah. I like having putting a little bit of flair on it. Oh no, he killed his teammate. Tipper there from Marth. Gonna attack the wrong target. A little bit of friendly fire. Jeez. Yeah. Oh yeah, limit blade beam. Okay. That was pretty good. And I like what I'm seeing right here, man, from Rob. I mean, down tilt's such a strong option that you can literally run to one side of the screen, down tilt, disrupt, and then get back to the other side yeah. of the screen and then do it all over again. Rob, a character that can be utilized so many different ways in doubles here. Yes, up tilt right into up air. And then another up air for the troubles. A little off the mark, but you know, though, you still have Marth in the blender here. And Marth, not with the quickest options out of shield besides up B, I would imagine it's the fastest one. Yeah. Not really going to help you too much in the air. And 
and like you were saying, I mean, Rob is just so versatile that he can play so many positions. As long as he's outside of the mix, if he's like on the side, he's in a perfect spot. You can see that it's either Hawk or Linus. I can't tell because they got these days. But one of the <laughs> two is doing such a good job of just chilling on the side and just picking his spots just expertly. You can see them both using projectiles here. They're just in such a comfortable spot. Oh. Yeah, and comfortability is a, it's a good thing to have in Devils, but can also kind of come back to bite you in the ass. I mean, most specifically speaking about, like, the, the Sen and, and Louis money set, you know. You don't want to get too comfortable, too complacent in, like, you know, your team synergy. You know, you always want to yeah. keep kicking it up a notch because you just never know. Your teammate might be able to turn it into something. And then great coverage right there from Marv coming in with the dancing, yeah. almost that double edged dance. The, the <laughs> dancing blade, because, you know, yeah, they don't want you to mix that up. They'll come and get you. Yeah, we'll get in trouble for that. But, yeah. I mean, how often do you see the dancing blade, right? Like, That's Marth true. is not common. No, yeah. See, there's the fourth throw. And, again, you can see Rob just on the side, not trying to put himself in the blender between Marth and Daisy. Just chilling. And that's why he's staying alive for so long. 161 still with three stocks. 175. Yeah, I like that little down air at the ledge right there from Nomad, too. Trying to read which way they're going to come up. Of course, with down air, since the multi-hitting attack, you know, you can catch a big old-ass body like Rob. But you know what, though? No down air needed right there. Stock gets taken, but a little too late right now. I mean, I got to be honest. Rob is one of those characters where when he's teamed up with anybody, you got to make sure you get rid of him first. Yeah. Rob will live forever. Z off on the side, Rob at five. Yeah, he's gonna survive. Marth is gone. Daisy, I assume, will not last much longer. You can see here, Rob with two stocks, Cloud with just one. But uh, Daisy is not long for this world. No, absolutely not. She's about to go the way of the dinosaurs here pretty quick. Yeah. Okay, yeah, dash attack. Yeah, because yeah, it's just like, at this point, why are we playing with our food? Yeah. All right, we came yeah. to eat. Yeah, not even a zoom in, no red spark, nothing. An unceremonious end for Daisy there and for Nomad and JC Fox. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Always loser's bracket. That's right. More opportunities. Linus and Hawk looked um, a lot more coordinated than I would expect for somebody in round one of pools like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, early on, you probably expect teams that know they're going to win or that feel a little bit better about these matchups. Yeah. They're just going to try some goofy stuff. And it happens. You know, it makes for a great viewing experience because people already have a weird opinion about doubles. So, you know, you get two people talented like Linus and Hawk to just come in and Basically, do what they just did there. Yo. It's not uncommon. But in their case, they just kind of stayed poised. They were like, yo, we're on a mission. Yo. And when I throw, you do this. When you do this, I do this. And they just did it to like the best of their ability. It looked really good. Yeah, there was no goofiness. No. Like, they were just like totally business all the way. Mm -hmm. um, looking very strong. We'll see how far they go. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I feel like at events like this, it's very common for there's like a dark horse team mm -hmm. that dominates, yep. that looks yep. very yep. strong, that goes far. I remember Loaf and Lucky, like you were saying before, oh, I, yeah. I remember seeing them do that yep. at a past event. Um, and, and it could happen here again. We'll see how far Linus and Hawk go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, actually, we're going to switch over and pay some bills really quick. So October 1st through 3rd, low Tide City. So, yes, if you're at Riptide and you are like, yo, I just need to keep swimming. How do I keep swimming? I want to get my dory on. Well, swim your ass right on over to Low Tide yeah. City, okay? Uh, 3001 Kalahari Boulevard, Round Rock, Texas, okay? Yes, Texas is whatever right now. Huh. But you know what, though? If Texas as a state is not going to have you covered, trust me, the people running this event will make sure you can swim as safely as possible. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many safety precautions happening mm -hmm. uh, at Riptide and I assume we'll be in place at Low Tide City. Check it out, smash.gg slash Low Tide City. Mm -hmm. Happening October 1st through the 3rd in Round Rock, Texas. Check it out if you need more water park tournaments, man. Uh, this is also happening at the Kalahari mm -hmm. at Round Rock. So if you if you see Riptide, you're thinking, oh, man, I should have gone. I see so many yep. tweets saying, yeah. you know, the, the fear of missing out. It's, it's uh, so many FOMO tweets mm -hmm. about not being able to make it. So Low Tide City is a good option. It really is. And then main stage, 2021. November 12th through 14th. So if you just watched BTS, you know, you just know that they did their summit. And Coney's here with me. And a lot of the people who just did that, players and production included, put on a phenomenal performance. But it ain't done there. Okay, main stage. Ontario, California. Six qualifiers uh, for Smash Summit 12. Six qualifiers for Ultimate Summit 4. Melee and Ultimate. Register now. BTS.gg slash main stage. Yes, they got their own website to sign up, all right? Dude, that, the, the fact that there are six qualifiers for the next Summit events, that's nuts. That is nutty. That's insane. Um, those events have always been very prestigious, being the Summits. Uh, people love those things. Every single year they bang. And to have six open spots at this, I mean, we might see a Dark Horse 
get into those, maybe even two yeah. with six qualifiers. So could be you. Check it out, Ontario, California. It could, it could be me. It you could think, be you. you. Think it could you be could me. make it. My me gunners going places. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, all jokes aside. Nobody needs to see that. We do, what people do need to see though are these four players right here now. Icy Miss. That's right. The iciest of all the Miss. She is here, and I. Is she still playing Samus these days? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, okay. I, Mav and Icy Mist, she's going to be on Samus, I believe. Okay. Uh, Mimo on the other side, Scar and Skittles. Yes. Skittles, a top Young Link player from, I believe he's from Nebraska. That's right, right he is. Yeah. yeah, he is. Well, I think he just recently moved for a school, but gotcha. where, wherever that young man goes, he just, he's farming. Sure. And what better place to farm than in Nebraska, okay, I mean? That's true, yeah. Cannon. So here we go, Mav versus Mav and Icy Mist versus Scar and Skittles. Mav on Cloud, Icy Mist, she is on Samus. Scar on Cloud, Skittles on the Young Link. That's right, and Icy Mist, one of the most prolific Samuses to ever pick Sam. Is that the plural? Samus, Samus? Semi, I don't Sam know. Yeah, my Ebonic, sorry. But one of the most prolific Samuses to ever do it. Uh, I mean, dating all the way back to, I believe, bro, rising to prom prominence, I believe, at Battle on the Strip in Smash 4 is where she really had that breakout performance. And then from there, she's really just been charged shot in her opponents ever since. But as we see right here, Skittles doing a really good job at pressuring in the corner. And that's just kind of the Young Link classic. I can just nair four times in a row for your one but Yeah, exactly. The Young Link is a character that uh, had a lot of stock when the game started, but has slowly fallen out of relevance in a lot of ways. Just not really as common or as popular as I think people were expecting or forecasting at the beginning of the game. Just hasn't had much staying power as opposed to something like Rob or Palutena. Uh, but what's most interesting to me is this is like the fifth cloud we've seen, right? Is cloud back? We've seen so many clouds this week already in doubles. Um, obviously a character I think that does better in doubles than singles, but God, he's everywhere. Yeah, he really is. I mean, again, you know, we've heard the, the narrative, you know, people kind of wrote Cloud off like kind of how they wrote Young Link right, off yeah. here, but I still think that this character has a lot of promise. And Still poses a pretty large size threat. I mean, yeah, I got to burn limit a little bit quicker than before, but for the most part, the combo potential, the ability to pass back and forth, the survivability is certainly there with Cloud. Okay, nice. Great tether. And then, yes, the imminent threat of charge shot at the ledge. If anybody should know how to deal with that, it should certainly be, uh, it should certainly be Skittles. Yeah. I live in Nebraska. You know, my roommate is censored. He plays a really good Samus. And so because of that, it's like, all right, man, how many charge shots? How many, you know, super missiles are we going to eat before we have to learn? Yeah, you got to watch that normal getup. Yeah. Normal getup just takes so long and you stand right up into the blast. Right now, Skittle's doing a good job of holding on to that stock at 110. He's holding center stage, doing the best that he can to just knock off on the side, but gets clipped into the up air. So unfortunate for him. You're going to see Mav and Icy Mist in a very good spot, I would say. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling very comfortable right now. I think... You know, Cloud and Samus are two characters that are pretty much bred for doubles. I mean, of course, they do very well in singles, especially Samus, by the way. Big glow up here in Smash. Yeah, Ultimate. she's had a big come up. Yeah. But in doubles, though, she's pretty damn good. Survivability is there. She's very tough to work around. Uh, her aerials are absolutely bonkers. Dash attack is screwed up. I keep almost wanting to curse because we're not, we're not online anymore. <laughs> we're, yeah, it's screwed up, though, how yeah. good dash attack is. See now 97, yeah, so racking up damage on Samus, but having that extra stock just means more insurance for the future. Look, it's so good here. You can see Skittles is the guy to watch because he is on his last stock at 85%. Trying to find an opening with these arrows. You can see he's trying to chill on the side so that he doesn't get in the mix. But now he's caught in the middle, trying to get hit by that dash deck you were talking about, but Icy Mist slightly missing. Yeah, you know, dash attack on both characters on the blue team is such a tough concept to work around. Lower percents, it can get combo very well off the of Samus. Higher percents, it's a kill option. I don't know what the frame is, but it hits pretty quick, and it sends you flying. So Icy Mist, obviously, she's not without KO options. Oh, the damn! Oh, I almost said the Belmont, but the Belmont is actually in the game now. That's just the Samus now. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. We can't even call it the Simon Belmont because Simon Belmont, he doesn't even do that. Yeah. That's not really a move he does. There's the, yeah, you can see the limit cross slash not quite enough. Yeah, fourth tilt. Icy Mist is going out there. Icy Mist does have to be careful though because Cloud can turn that on you with Climb Hazard with something like that and she's only at 22. Yeah, you catch her without a jump and she's, uh, yeah. she's grasping for straws out there. No seal poke, very smart to go for far away forward here. 
No way. We're about is, to see another 2v1 come I was going to say, this would be the third 2v1 of the day. No way, dude. Oh. Okay, oh, nice. I love the jab. The Samus Kung Fu is real, y'all. That one jab yeah. is not what you think. The game even tells you. Like, there's like a tooltip in the game that's like, yeah, Samus jab sucks. Just use jab one. Yeah. There we go. Good back air. You can see just barely placing that against Scar. It was looking uh, like a spacing battle. I mean, I think Scar tried to pop out a neutral air, uh -huh. but Icy Mist was able to get out a back air just barely. And Scar and Skittles, unfortunately, back to the wall. Yeah, you know, Skittles, I got to say, you know, Young Link, so strong in singles. And the character's pretty good in doubles, but there's a certain type of ideology you have to go in with when you're teaming with a character like Young Link. Yeah. Got to understand. Boomerangs are going to be flying everywhere because they need that move to approach. They can't not boomerang and they can't not go for neutral special. Right. You know, it's not enough for Yelling to just be able to nair on your shield. There's going to be a character that has a really good out of shield option. Granted, not so much Samus, but there's going to be other characters that Skittles is going to come across where I just cannot pressure you physically up close. So I'm going to really rely on my projectiles. And for somebody like Cloud, that's almost okay. Like, I don't yeah. mind eating boomerang because it's just helping me build limit up. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think Young Link is, ironically, a character that does worse in doubles than singles, which isn't especially common. I think a lot of characters, you can accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how a lot of characters can function in doubles, but Young Link is actually the opposite, where it feels like he's just... W one of the weakest parts of Young Link is that recovery, right? Oh, Once yeah. he's off stage, it's very easy to disrupt. But he's not a character you can really go down and save because he falls like a rock. He really so, does. Yeah. And he almost has his own sort of system for recovery, too, because he has, like, you know, obviously both the double jumps, yeah. the bomb reset, the tethering, all that type of stuff, too. So if you are teaming with the young link of this caliber and they need saving, you're teaming with the wrong person. Yeah. You see there's a down air from Skittles getting that first kill. Red team looking way stronger at the start here. Oh, yeah. Icy Mist is at 119, but doesn't have much to watch out for from Young Link. I mean, like, I feel like Young Link isn't quite as scary at these percent windows. It's really Scar and Cloud here. Yeah, because, you know, Young Link needs that one hit into another hit. Exactly. You know, they don't yeah. have the stray hits are not really there. So, I mean, on that same turn of breath, though, Usually, like, grounded neutral beat that pops the opponent in the air. Like, yeah. that's your opportunity as the teammate to go in and be like, okay, this is a good distance for me to go in and go for a follow-up. So. Definitely. Oh. See right now, uh, red team with a slight lead. All comes down to Scar. You can see Scar farming limit on the side. He does get it, throws the blade beam. That's so smart. If Scar just keeps doing that, he can get so much free percent. It does put his opponent in a 2v1, which sucks. But it means he's not dropping that stock. He can hold it for a very long time. Yeah, and survivability is definitely the name of the game with Cloud because it's so easy to be like, oh, Cloud's recovery, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. But honestly, though, in order to even, like, get into the recovery talk, you have to actually hit Cloud's ass. Yeah. And if you can't even get close enough or if he's not allowing you or if he's just, like, spacing so well that you just cannot find an opening, this is the Cloud being played very well. Yeah. Good Lord. Well, there we go. Yeah. Finally, Finally. Down air bounce. I mean, he lived forever. He made the most out of that stock. Even in stocks, but not for set. You see Scar trying to find a way open. Yeah, Icy Miss going to lose that one. Red team well on their way to tying it up. This might be the first game three of the day. It could possibly. Oh, wait, no. We had the, Louis money and the damn Louis money ball. But, but Never we didn't mind. know, though. That doesn't count. We, and we also missed, like, 55% of that match. Too. That's true, yeah. <laughs> okay. Bomb. I like that. I like this more subtle approach here that Skittles was taking. I feel like in the last game he was being more the aggressor. Now he's kind of playing the role that Icy Mist is playing. You know, they're both kind of just staying in the mid. Well, oh god. Now you might have to be a little bit more aggressive here. Who knows? But yeah, maybe overstayed his welcome on the ledge there a little bit. Yeah. But either way, I think it's uh, pretty comfortable for the red team. Icy Mist, if she can hold on to that stock, there might be a breath of life here, but it's going to be difficult. Okay. Okay, double bow and arrow. Nothing off the boomerang, but just kind of pinning him down here. And you got to really watch that uh, that chip away damage. I mean, versus other characters, sure. Versus Cloud, you got to make sure every hit counts, obviously. Because every time you hit him, he gets that limit built up. So you definitely don't want to be the guy that was like, how did he get this at 50%? Oh, yeah, I just kept throwing Deku nuts at him. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I did that. Oops. You saw there Skittles not getting the KO with the up B. That was so unfortunate. Looked like he had him off on the side totally, but not quite enough. Doesn't matter either way, though. Icy Mist left all alone here. 
146. You've got to imagine it's probably going to wrap up quickly. And we're probably going to go to the next game. I mean, like, if it was uh, if it was a 2v1, but they both only have one stock, it'd be fine. But having three is just... Yeah, three is absurd. Even for much. somebody as Samus who can live a hell of a long time out there, she's very heavy. The recovery system is absolutely phenomenal. Even if she's out of a jump, she can, like, bomb recovery her way back. But not while Mr. Strife is at the ledge. Yeah. I love that wait from Scar. Chilling out, waiting for the opportunity, and eventually landing it. So Red Team going to tie it up, 1-1 one, one currently. And it all comes down to the counter pick. The first two games, if I'm not mistaken, were on PS2. That's right. So we'll see if uh, Blue Team has anything else up their sleeve, maybe something different. Uh, I feel like that stage is fine, though, for Cloud, Samus. Um, might, I, I feel like you need something big. Yeah, Town and City might not be a bad choice. Yeah, just a uh, lot of room to work with. Yeah, I think you need more room. Definitely yeah. not Battlefield, though. I no. feel like something like Battlefield or something that tight would be a bad idea. Yeah, agreed. I just feel like the survivability on all the players. Uh, I mean, it was just ridiculous in that last game. I mean, Cloud living to, I mean, more than halfway into the match, mind you. Yeah. Living to the dark red percents that long is ridiculous. Yes. Um, Samus, I expect that from. Of course, she's a pretty tough character to kill. Uh, you know, for a multitude of reasons. For one, you don't want to approach her because she's annoying to fight. But then also, you know, she's heavy too. She's kind of floaty. She's just whatever. Young Link, though, is like, if I expect any character to, you know, drop stocks pretty quickly, it's definitely Young Link. But Skittles actually survived a pretty decent time there. Yeah. I love that neutral air from Skittles. Getting a little bit more damage, but sort of unconventional. Hasn't even been touched here, and his teammate Scar only 6%. Oh, yeah. Red team coming out of the gate swinging here in game three. There you go. Forward air right there for some coverage. Getting nothing off of it. And I like what the red team is kind of playing here. You know, originally it was like, you know, we're both going to kind of stay back to back and play the doubles game as it comes. So if we're close to each other and the combo arises, we'll be fine. Now they're like, you know what? We're going in, you know, head on, and we're jumping somebody. Yeah. Okay, we're going to hit one guy off stage, leave him out there. If Mav's out there, we're going to jump Icy Mist. Ooh, that was so scary there. You saw the Ford Smash charging up from Mav. And I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing so much cloud is it's so easy to just, like, if your opponent gets a grab on your teammate, it's so easy to just charge a smash attack and punish them hard if they make a quick decision, if they make something rash. It's easy to knock them out. Oh, yeah. Speaking of getting knocked out right there, running right into the barrel cannon there on Samus's arm. You got to watch yourself. What's funny is Icy Miss, we haven't really seen a lot of charge shots from her. A lot of her Not KOs really, have just yeah. come from, like, just the Samus Kung Fu. Yeah, it's weird. Um, I feel like she's been firing a lot of charge shots, but they haven't, like, been the killing blow. Yeah. They've done some damage, but not quite enough. Yeah, she has some very strange hitboxes. They're obviously not like we fit strange, but they're strange enough to get it done in a very major way. Yeah. And I know what you say about, like, oh, you know, don't go off stage. You know what I'm saying? We don't do that in Ultimate. But honestly, you know, there's some characters whose aerials are just that screwed up where I'm like, you know what? This is fine for Samus. Yeah. Nair on Cloud, Nair on Young Link especially, they can't deal with that. They can't handle that really well. They Let's up there from see. underneath here. Great pressure. I mean, again. Yeah. This is weird because Red Team was looking very powerful at the start. Yeah. They came out swinging. But I think Icy Miss staying alive for what? Almost, yeah, two and a half minutes nearly. Might have swung the momentum for the blue team. It all comes down to Mav now who is at 133 on Cloud. If he can just keep farming limit, throwing it from afar, maybe picking up some kills. He's wow. got to stay alive, though. Yeah, that's the that's the tricky part about this wonderful game we call Smash. Survivability is kind of tough. There's the up B and then back air. And then, yeah, we're starting to see, uh, you know, Skittles kind of come into themselves a little bit. A lot of those single combos that don't quite work in doubles are starting to come out. Which could also be a very telling sign for the blue team that we might be spending too much time away from each other. There's that Nair I talked about before, Ice is. Great game. Sorry, I got my mask caught in my mouth. This is different, y'all. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I used to miss those great stuff. Can we talk about commentating with masks is kind of hard, yeah, dude. It's a, it, there's a meta it's there. It's a different skill. Yeah. This is tough. Yeah, 114 on Young Lake here. You can see three stocks across the board. I feel like uh, this really is anybody's game. You can't always say that in double sets. Mav with an excellent punish there with that up smash. Well done, Cloud. Really showing his worth at doubles, man. He's very good at this. Oh, yeah. There's the cross slash. Courtesy of that up air there by Icy Miss. Skittles really struggling right now. 
Nice, I love that. And yeah, that's the problem. You know, there always has to be a chain of command right there on Young Link's combos, and because of that, oh, nice, shield coming in handy. Quite literally and figuratively there. Yeah. Nice, forward air. Well, this is awkward. This is awkward, because right. you do have to take the stock, I think. Oh. Uh, but I think, I, no, I think Icy Mist is saying, I got this. Um, they yeah. Have this. She had this once upon a time here. This is still very doable, though, but Cloud has to stay on their P's and Q's. I oh. mean, remember last game, we said, you know, it was doable if it was in three stocks, if it was just two. Well, now that opportunity has come. Can you make the most from it? I don't know. This is tough. Not looking icy, miss. I don't melt now. Sam is just kind of getting run down. Yeah, this this ain't Ridley. It's not looking good here. Phew! Okay, at the ledge here, setting up shop. This is the Samus Classic, and that's okay. She can play off stage for quite some time. This is extra tough, too, because Cloud could get as much limit as he wants in a 2v1. He had to pop it. Yes. He had to let it rip, right? right? He was about to lose it, so why not? Icy Miss looking, uh, I don't know, kind of helpless in the 2v1 there. Yeah, I mean, she played it as well as she could. I mean, did everything you're supposed to do with Samus. Get on that platform, kind of stay back in the cut, wait for them to come to you, but... Uh, you know, the two-on-two, two, say what you want about the red team. You know, the synergy was there in points, and then it was kind of not. But in the 2v1, you don't have to worry about that other player. I got a better generalized idea of where my teammate is. So I don't have to worry about hitting him. Now it's just a game of ping pong. Yeah. And Samus, that's a lot of body to be hitting. Yeah, Cloud is just so good at following through on aerials and just juggling back and forth. Yeah. And that's what you saw there from Scar and Skittles, who are going to go up in the set. Uh, Cloud is everywhere. Yeah. I really? just, I, it's weird. Yeah, like he, he, we didn't see that a lot, you know. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll see him throughout doubles. Maybe he'll make an appearance in top eight if this keeps up. Yeah, maybe um, Spargo's kind of just revitalized the cloud meta and not just singles but also doubles. It's really interesting too, because I mean, Diddy and Sheep, right? Two characters that a lot of people wrote off after Smash Four. People slowly started revisiting. Maybe Cloud has some stuff to him too. Mm. Um, a lot of people have been saying that he's sort of just harder working, you know? There's so many sword characters in this game that it becomes like you really have to optimize to pick the right one for you. Yeah. Uh, maybe people are going to come back to him. I don't know. We'll see. Pyro yeah. Mithra just came out, and that, it feels like they're sort of the uh, mm -hmm. the quintessential sword right. character. But who knows? Yeah, Mithras. I keep wanting to curse. I can't do that here. Uh. I mean, you can kind of on BTS, but you can't though at the same time. Yeah. Mithras is different, man. Because she's yeah. a sortie, but, like, she doesn't move like a sortie, and that's what makes her so terrifying to fight. And then at the yeah. drop of a hat, you know, she literally snaps her fingers, and now she's a no, whole other character. And you're like, okay, I just got comfortable with approaching Mithra one type of way, and now here's Pyro, just the, the one-hit KO. You know yeah. what I mean? It really tests a player's adaptability mm -hmm. and their, uh, their opportunity to be able to, like, they have to change on the fly. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to mix it up quickly. A pool water? What is this? Did you drink the water? Yeah, it was fine. It was all right? Okay. You don't like it? I don't know. It's all right. Not fancy enough for Rod? Huh? Huh? You going to be a diva about it? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not. Or what's what's the one we all hate? Uh, Nestle Pure Life. Nestle Pure Life. It's not yeah. Nestle. Phew. Well. Thank God. I, I, I am so afraid of the day. One day we're going to have sponsors. Mm. We're going to have Nestle as a sponsor, and I'm going to. Please, God, don't make me do that. Yeah, no. don't speak that into existence. I, I'm yeah. terrified. Absolutely not. Yeah. Sorry, the water just had like a bit of a. Hmm, that was interesting. Oh, now I taste it. You, you son of a bitch! You sorry, did that I'm to me. sorry. Yeah, I, was, I just. I, you got you got a lot more on the line tonight. I'm going back home to nobody. You got a wife and a child, <laughs> so they they need That's you. That's true. Yeah. yeah, I will be the the water taste tester for Coney. Is that a Tomsk? I I. <laughs> did you oh, just? Oh man! <laughs> That's my butt. Wait a minute. This is a good match. Is that Pan? Who is, is that? Pandarian. That's Pandarian. Okay. Yeah, wait. Pandarian so, has the, uh, definitely has, like, that aesthetic. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, when I see somebody two fly sit down, I'm like, that has to be Pandarian. So, yeah, so this is a pretty interesting match because I feel like this is early for this to happen. Okay, hold on. I got to get on Twitter and actually check Pandarian's uh, pronouns really quick. So, uh, Adamisk and Yoda Cage, both very strong players from Joyzy. Yoda Cage, one of the top juniors to do it. Meanwhile, Adamus, of course, DDD player, uh, did pretty well at Summit. She did. Got you. Okay. You, you know, uh, Pandarian really 
not needing much of an introduction. She's one of the top players in Washington Pacific Northwest. Oh yeah. Played Pokemon Trader, but has a few other characters in their pocket. Meanwhile, Ludo on Mario. We'll see what they can do as well. Let's start it up. There you go. That's uh, you know, pretty even here on all fronts. You know, I think all these characters do pretty well in doubles, especially Ivysaur, the ability to pass, the ability to rack yeah. up percent, and then Cody has, you know, the ability to take stocks. I mean, nobody quite does it like early Ivysaur. But with that same turn of breath, though, you can't spend too much time off stage. Adam missed that DDD. I mean, literally, I catch you swinging on that Vine Whip, I'm going to throw this belly out at you. Yeah. DDD is sort of functions almost like a bad cloud. I think that if the opponent, you know, swings or tries to do anything, he can really get in there and punish hard. It's just a little bit tougher because he does have more clunky, sort of weird hitboxes. Oh, yeah. But right now, blue team looking strong. I'm most interested to see how this junior functions because, like, I think uh, Pokemon Trainer and Mario, pretty self-explanatory in doubles. Uh, we know how they operate. Um, they sort of do the same thing. But meanwhile, Junior is such a weird and different character with such a unique, specialized game plan. Yeah. What do they do in doubles specifically? You yeah, know? No doubt about it. And you know what's funny is I actually just seen that. No, that's to bring it up. I did see like inhale into up smash a couple times. Yeah. And I like that concept because both characters on the blue team ridiculously strong up smashes. But Bowser Jr. just hits different. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, I expect Bowser Jr. to be the combo finisher in a lot of these exchanges, but we'll have to see because DDD's no slouch himself. See Pandarian oh, yeah. stuck on the side, struggling quite a bit. Oh, down air from DDD, but they're going to be able to make it back. Oh my god, the Gordo trading with Flare Blitz. I would not have guessed that. Strange interaction. But here we go, blue team, uh, four stocks, red team, four stocks. Next stock might win. Oh, oh my god, 82. Jeez, man. Just when you thought Mario couldn't get any stronger, more ridiculous. There's the forward smash and the up smash for the coverage. And yes, I even had to hit my teammate to make sure I could solidify that stock is my own. Down air. Not quite enough. I thought it was a soft spike. Didn't know if Mario would make it back. They did, but it doesn't matter. So good die on the side. Blue team with four stocks. Not the easiest characters to kill either. You might have to swing big to get rid of both of them. Yeah. And I like that Nair right at the ledge too. I mean, I got to I got to really give it to uh to Yoda Case. I mean, the comfortability at the corner is just ridiculous, especially versus a character with a lot of options to cover themselves like Mario. Yeah. The players are back to the ledge. And I don't think Bowser Jr. has the quickest aerials in the world, so that really takes some good timing. Yeah. Yeah, it's not quick, it just covers a lot of space. That's right. So it's sort of a different mindset. Let's see Mario back throw should do it. Yeah. But still, two stocks to one. Uh, Mario, I mean, he does have the the robbery angle with the up airs into the board air. But that's really hard to do in a 2v1 because the opponent could just yeah. stop you, you know. Board air? Oh, no, Gordo. Oh, no, that's yours, good sir. <laughs> I insist. Using uh, throw invincibility to great effect, triple four tilt. Ludo's looking really strong here. Looking good at the 2v1, but it's still a 2v1 at the end of the day. It's still a 2v1 against two very, very hard hitting characters. And even if Adamus can't get off stage to you know do what they need to do, Gordo, even if it, if we, even if it can be like reflected or dealt with, it's still messing up your recovery system back to the ledge. Yeah. Up air, up air, up air, up air, up B. Adamisk is going to live, though. No punish, though, which is kind of crazy. Uh-oh. Has to burn the air dodge. This is not a good position to be in. Honestly, I feel like Mario could absolutely do this if they weren't both weren't so goddamn heavy. Yeah. Like, day-to-day -day is going to live forever. Uh, Junior's not really light himself. So I feel like this is going to be really hard for Ludo because you got to land two big swings. Oh, God, and yeah. then there's that, and, and then there's that. That's Morton Cooper, right? Yeah, that's Morton. Morton's not having it. He's the ugly one. Yeah, yeah he's, he's not He's not easy on the eyes. Yeah, I hate that guy. Um, I'd say a face only a mother could love, but I don't really know who his mom is. Who's the mom? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Show yourself. I know you're here. Who did Who did Bowser, you know, mate with? Who's, yeah. uh, I don't want to go down this road. I actually don't either, but I'm like, you know what? There are some questions I need answering, yeah. okay? But yeah. there's a lot of damn kids. Yep. Okay? <laughs> I could see if it was just one. All right? You got 50 damn ugly kids. I'm like, Do they come the out in a litter? Like, you think it's, like, all at once? Or is it, like, a... 
They come out of eggs, right? Because oh, they're damn. they're turtles. You're right. Damn, poor lady. If yeah. that came out as a litter, she was there a while. <laughs> she was there a while. <laughs> and then Junior, who's like a different one, you know? It's yeah. weird. He's like All a right. different mom. Next up, uh, these guys are the same. All the characters are staying uh, here on this one, but we are to a smaller stage here. So small battlefield rather than PS2 for this next one. Yeah, this one, when you get on a stage like this, this is just all about stage control. Who's going to be able to utilize not only the main part of the stage, but those platforms are going to be huge because all these characters combo so well from above. Yeah. You can see right now, pretty even across the board. Nothing really uh, too crazy going on. Just a lot of combos. Sometimes hitting your teammate, but that's just as it is in doubles. Yes, sir. Nice. Goes for the down there. Not the correct hit, but still gets a little something off the ledge. And unfortunately, Koopa just, Morton Koopa, excuse me, running out of some gas right there towards the ledge of the stage. Whoa. Okay, yes, yeah, going to go for the rapid jab. And one of, oh. the, one of the strongest rapid jabs in the game, too. Not enough, but does get the red stuff. And on the other side of the stage, you see Adamus surprising Pandarium with that dash attack. Pandarium went for the switch and got up right into the dash attack. And honestly, might have been able to get out of it if it wasn't Charizard. I mean, like, I don't know if they were landing at that exact time. Maybe Squirtle would have been in the air. But unfortunate switch there. And now, you got five stocks to four. Four stocks to four. Wait, Red Team is shaving these stocks off. They really are. Red Team came with something to say. They didn't like the way that last one shaped up, and they're looking to make a big splash. Pandarian. Damn, Pandarian's playing so well right now. Yeah. They got that flare blitz there. Oh. Looking so strong. The forward smash almost going to land. You know you know, down tilt's coming every time after forward smash. It's oh, just yeah. a matter of when. Oh, yeah. So that's about how little that shield was. Great evasive uh, maneuvers, but not good enough. Oh, no. Up smash on his teammate. And yeah, I have to imagine we're going to game three here. Uh, you saw that, yeah, red team just firing on all cylinders after that tough first game. Oh, yeah. This is anything but good right now, if I may say so myself, Pony. I do like to switch over to Charizard. This is a character that we haven't quite seen too much of, but I like it, though, when they're in the lead. Yeah. Charizard just breeds survivability, and I want to take stocks as quickly as possible. And when you're in the lead, what better character to stay in the lead with than with Charizard? Good upbeat. Yeah, yeah, that's going to do it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, up air, forward air. Going so far down, but not quite enough to KO. Uh, I was surprised we got the screen there because it looked like he didn't go down far at all, honestly. That's right, yeah. So I'm trying to go out there. And you can see Ludo is relentless, dude. This Mario, he just smells blood and he goes for it. Yeah, Ludo, I mean, just, you know, when you when you see character, oh my god. Well, double four there, yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? One of those is going to hit. I mean, they're just able to cover so much space in front of them. Uh, Charizard throwing that huge forward air, and that'll do it. So now out to game three. Honestly, uh, Pandaria and Ludo looking really strong in that last game, looking like they sort of figured out this DDD uh, Koopa sort of gameplay. But at the same time, I think so much of it came down to stage because small battlefield, just having that tight area made it so the big bodies in DDD and Junior are just so much easier to hit in combo. Yeah, it was all about stage positioning. On a stage that small, especially with how those platforms are positioned, like in accordance to the stage, you get characters like DDD, characters like Charizard, they're like, okay, I cannot afford to get hit yeah. because it's going to be very easy to cover me from one end of the stage to another. So I have to make sure I stay as stationary as possible, and I have to make sure that, like, when I go for hits, they are as calculated as possible. I cannot afford to swing incorrectly. Yeah. Not just for the sake of getting myself punished, but I also swing big, which means I could also hit my teammate as well. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much on the line. The I, hitboxes yeah. are huge. They're, yeah, like, they're the hitboxes ginormous. are big. Yeah, they are damn huge. All right, so no swaps here in terms of characters. Everybody's going to rock with what got them here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to imagine this has got to be pretty late in the pool. I mean, like I feel like yeah. these would be pretty high seeds. Maybe it's pool finals. I think uh, so. I would, I would imagine so, but... We'll see how things go for this final game. It is game three. Pandarian and Ludo against Adamus and Yoda Cage. Maybe, I was going to say, maybe talking about characters because Adamus is nodding his head and they're talking, but I don't know who else he plays. 
Yeah, I was going to ask. I mean, Adamus has been around for a very long time. I mean, yeah. longer than I've been in the community. I've been here seven years. So, yeah. yeah, I don't exactly know the other characters in their toolkit. But, I mean, hell, this character allowed you to, you know, do well. I mean, honestly, let's be real. Do better than well. I mean, you went to Summit with DDD. I mean, has there ever been a DDD at Summit until Adamus? Oh, God, no. One sets, too. Yeah. Went absolutely off right now and obviously looking to recreate that magic here. And Riptide is doing it in a pretty okay fashion now. I was going to say, you know, trailing in percent, but are you ever really trailing in percent with your King DDD? I mean, you're damn near impossible to kill. Yeah. As long as you can hold that stock, uh, which can be a challenge sometimes against certain characters. I just realized that we went back to Small Battlefield, which I'm really surprised by. I feel like uh, this really does not bode well for Blue Team. I feel like it's so much easier to combo day to day with these low platforms with the small stage. I feel like this is a misstep on their part, but it's not too bad for them right now. Yeah, most definitely not. And I think it's because, so, and that's kind of like the duality of this stage here, especially with Koopa and, uh, and DDD. It's, when we have positioning, it's going really well. Yes, good Nobody point, can yeah. work around Gordo. Nobody can work around Cannonball. Nobody can work around any of that. But when things are going bad, shit like this happens. They go really bad, yeah. yeah. It's oh, that's tough. You saw Pandarian. They got hit by a back air from Junior. Have to imagine they would have died, but day to day saving them with that grab doesn't matter, though. That'll do it. Okay. Nice. Rapid dab. Up air. Okay, I thought we were going to see up smash, yeah. but that was actually really great synergy. You got to time that dab. See Mario going to land unfettered. Really nothing uh, doesn't eat too much of a punish. Yoda Cage. Opts to go for Pandarian instead. And DDD again, the guy to watch, 130. If they lose that stock quickly, Adamisk is gonna be in a very bad spot. Pandarian on the edge guard, trying to go for the down air, not gonna happen, charges the forward smash. Excellent job by Yoda Cage to disrupt. I gotta say, man, there's a lot of things that we've kind of shaken out of our systems from early ultimate. Forward smash at the left, but Ivysaur ain't one of them. No. Everybody still gets hit by that, so that was very smart. When you got multiple jumps, you know what, just jump off stage and reset the situation. Yeah. Plus, you have a teammate. So right there, one of the techniques you see Adamus and Yoda Cage using. So DDD's inhale yeah. works by weight. So the heavier the character he inhales is, the stronger the hit is. Mm. And with Junior being pretty heavy, it means that star is a viable KO option. He might swallow up his teammate and then just spit him back out for a kill. Oh, wow. Uh oh. Like, oh god, okay. everybody's dead. Yeah, stocks are just, uh, stocks are flying. All right, well, even stocks here all around. Who's gonna make the biggest play first? Pandarian kind of in the hot seat right here. I mean, yeah. she's done really well, but, uh, you know, Ivysaur can only do so much, and we haven't seen really Charizard at all. I would imagine the character's gonna come out here pretty soon. Yeah, I, I feel like Pandarian is, like you said, she's in the hot seat uh, 100%. Has to watch these, yeah, you could see Yoda Cage just a relentless going to the top, trying to find this kill. They're really chasing her down specifically. Yeah, you can watch it in their gameplay, but it doesn't matter because a bit of a sleight of hand there, despite going for Pandarian, it looks like Ludo drops the stock first. And now, looks like it's just a matter of time. Yoda Cage, alive you are not. Living up to the name there, wow. Yeah. Great stuff right there. I mean, you know, again, a Pandarian, phenomenal player. Yep. But this is doubles, and I got to be honest, you know, the Ivy Store was really good, but there was just a couple exchanges where I'm like, Ivy Store is taking a lot of percent here a little too early. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And in singles, you know, you can certainly survive a lot longer because I can space with, like, Nair. I can space with back air. I have Razor Leaf. You know, all those tools a lot more viable in, in singles. And I guess, you know, the aerials are good in doubles as well for passing. Sure. But if you're not using that to kind of space properly, because I think your teammate's really counting on you to be the one that's going to survive. Yeah. Because only one can really go in and go ham. One has to stay back. Yeah, I think Ivysaur just sort of can struggle in that sort of scenario. I think that's just a really awkward matchup. Yeah. Being DDD and, uh, and, and Junior, because... Junior has very bursty, immediate options. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, is able to dash in, try to do like a retreating forward air, yep. try to just go in with cart, something like that. And I think Ivysaur can have difficulty spacing out because you don't want to just throw something like Razor Leaf, no, right? Because that might hit your teammate. Right. Mario has to go in there. Um, Ivysaur definitely looked like the comfort character for Pandarium for most of that set, just rocking with, uh, with Ivysaur. But 
yeah, at the end of the day, it felt like you're not the, taking stocks. Yeah, it's just you're not really getting KOs. Mario could struggle to do that too. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are some reliable mainstays, but I mean, once you get to a certain percent, you know what Mario wants. Yeah, he's looking know? for up smash. He's looking for some very simple things. And the same could be said for Ivysaur, but Ivysaur needs like kind of like Young Link earlier. They kind of need that hit into something, or they yeah. need to be isolated from the other half of doubles. Yeah, so they can beat you up one on one. And when you take that away from Ivysaur, it's like, well, if I just need a KO, I should probably switch over to Charizard. But then you're going to get, yeah. oh, God, yep. then you're going to explode. Yeah, yep. then you're going to explode because now you're big. And you switch to Charizard so late. It's like, survivability, are you really about to play into that right now? So, yep. I don't know. All in all, though, big shout out to both of those two players. They played very well. Adamisk, of course. Yoda Cage, I mean, what more really needs to be said about them too? Legends in their own right. Yeah. And bringing us something a little bit different in doubles. You don't get to see a lot of Bowser or Morton Koopa, excuse me. <laughs> Morton and King DDD. These What's days. funny is uh, Yoda Cage is it, it just, if you look at the disparity in terms of, I like your shoes. They're just soft. They, oh, you like Those my Super nice. Mario's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got the, the yeah. can we get them on the. I think we're about to. Yeah, can I get up? the Super? Check it out. Oh, oh, sorry. You know, you get the coin on the bottom. Check it go. out. Yo, Ooh. thanks. Oh, hold on. Can I, can I hit them angles with your phone now? <laughs> like your favorite? Sorry. Uh, but no, I feel o like. Only fans coming soon. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> only shoes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like with, with Adamus and Yoda Cage specifically, like, that's such a difference in terms of, like, generation. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Adamus, like you were saying, he was around from before you were around. Yeah. Uh, he's around from before I was around. Well, and I got in 2009. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, so that guy has been just in the game forever. Uh, Yoda Cage a bit younger, you know that's what right, I mean? Right. Playing junior. Um, I don't know if they got started in Ultimate or Smash 4, but either way, not around since, you know, the previous game. So it's always good to see that level of, you know, sort of having different – uh, teammates in terms of when they got started. And here we got Wadi and Hungrybox. Uh, one of the strangest team combinations you'll see. Definitely. Um, and then, of course, we got two, on the opposing side, two other ultimate mainstays, Goblin and a Schroeder. This should be good here. So it's going to be uh, Roy Greninja, I would imagine. But I know Schroeder also plays Mario 2. And then it's going to be, of course, Jigs and... I almost said, of course, actually, but Wadi does play a really good Wii Fit. Well, and a really good Jigglypuff, I, too. I was going to say, Wadi also plays Jigglypuff, so, I mean, I doubt it, but maybe, Come you on. know? Perhaps. Here we go. Let's get it started. Uh, okay, so, Wadi one. and HBox, this is. I, I feel like this is a team you don't want to lose to. No. Because I feel like it's like, you know, people are going to laugh at you. But let's not forget, these are two very talented players. Obviously, HBox much more notable in Melee, but has been playing so much Ultimate since uh, quarantine started. Meanwhile, Wadi, uh, despite his persona as a guy who, you know, doesn't know much about the game or gets beat up a lot, let's not forget, he was, I believe, top 20 in the world without owning a Switch. Yeah. I remember reading something, too, that he was winning Xanadu's in Smash 4 with solo jigs. Was, was that true? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that part, but I know he was farming. He okay. was doing well. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you get a player like that, I mean, there's not really much more you can say about him that hasn't yeah. already been said. I mean, sponsored for a reason, right? He's still with Panda Global? Yes, sir. Okay, thank God. Y'all hiring my <laughs> just, We'll talk about it later. In the, in the meantime, though, yeah, uh, you know, the double Roy team doing kind of what I expected them to do. Of course, they're going to blow up the opponents, but they're also going to get blown up too thick. You know, it's not enough to have the team synergy in terms of combo building. You know, you also have to have it in terms of saving each other as well because, yeah. let it be told, Roy is going to need a lot of saving. Yeah, no question. Roy is just so easy to combo, so easy to pass back and forth. And Roy isn't great at saving himself in that way. Uh, I think what the – oh, my God, up air into rest. Well done by HBox out of nowhere, just popping that stock. Yes, the hungriest of all the boxes is here. What it comes down to is how quickly you can kill that Jigglypuff because it is so easy to just get her with that double edge dance on the side and kill her at like 60, 70. But the problem is she's a threat off stage if you're not careful. And you can see HBox proving it here. Just these aerials are obnoxious. They really are, man. And, you know, HBox knows his role in doubles. He knows. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, Bro, God. The double Roy F smash. Good Lord, you're a madman. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah, definitely not the best spot to ever be stuck in the middle of. 
But yeah, you know, one thing I will give Hungry Box is that he knows his points in a lot more ways than just on, on the sticks and yeah. off the sticks. He knows how to attack a lot of things. He just knows himself. And when you apply that type of mentality on the sticks, I mean, it just makes for great double play. You can see Wadi is really operating as the stock tank here. What, do you share here? I don't think you do. Yeah. I don't think you do that. I, it's very questionable. But I guess they want. They would rather have the 2v2. Uh, I I just I worry about if Wadi dies, that Jigglypuff is going to be roasted very quickly. Yeah, you're going to get put on that good old grill. Definitely got to, oh, oh, almost. Close. We really got to play to Roy's weaknesses here. I mean, yeah. when you have a character like Jigglypuff and Roy who can get Rob or or Jigglypuff and Rob, excuse me, I can get Roy off stage with relative ease. You got to play into that. Now, of course, the main uh, narrative in doubles is get one guy off stage and then jump the other guy. But when Roy is such a linear recovery system, yeah. get off stage and whoop his ass. Especially as Jigglypuff. Not hard. 129 here. I don't know, dude. This is still very scary. Yeah, one solid hit on Jigglypuff, and it's going to get ugly. All right, up air should do it. Yeah, Wadi and h box escaping that game. It was looking dicey. Um, and, I, and I guess, you know, in hindsight, it is easy to agree with the decision for h box to come back. You do want the 2v2. You don't want a 2v1 with two Roy's. But it does feel like a lot of that came down to Wadi not dying. Yeah. Wadi had to play so careful. Because if he died anywhere in that final exchange, it would have been curtains. And let's be honest, you know, Wadi traditionally is a killing machine. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that he can't wear multiple hats. We've seen Wadi do damage literally for the last, what has it been he's been playing for? I don't know if he's been playing since Brawl, but I know for sure Smash 4. So, yeah. you know, a little under five, six years he's been going absolutely He's a Brawl player. He came yeah. from Brawl. There you go. So he's been playing literally for a decade. We've seen him wear a multitude of different hats, but it was nice to see him kind of take the back seat and let Hungry Boxes, you know what? Let me just kind of hungry my box everywhere. You know yep. what I mean? Let me just nair rest. Let me get the opponents off stage a little bit more. Let's see what happens. So it looks like, uh, yeah, we're going to switch over to Super Mario. Stroder going to be playing Mario instead of Roy. I do think this is the right pick. I think Double Roy just sort of specializes way too far in one direction. Right. I think Mario offers a lot more versatility. And I also write really like the stage pick because I think Jigglypuff, despite her aerial combos, she combos like horizontally, not That's vertically. Right. Right. And I think Mario with these triplats, he's not giving up too much to go here against Jigglypuff because he gets so much. Yeah, this is pretty much another Mario playground stage. You know, him, Cloud, ZSS. You know. Yeah. We see, especially notably back in like Smash 4, like how strong they can be here. Um, I also like the fact that he's Mario and not Greninja. I do like his Greninja a lot, but Greninja just requires a lot to KO in doubles at least. Yeah. And you just don't have time to be sexy Greninja here. Yeah. Nobody's going to let you do your dance, okay? You got to like get these great <laughs> hits and then go about your business. Oh my God. Huge offstage board here from Wadi. Just cleaning that stock off the board very far on the side. Wadi will go out there time and time again. You can see here, HBox almost dying that double edge dance, but the counter pick actually coming back to bite them there oh, yeah. as HBox survived at like 106 from that. That wouldn't happen normally. No, absolutely not. Hungry Box on borrowed time. I was going to say, looking really good and really putting the Jigglypuff strengths. I mean, playing off stage, floating around, and just being as evasive as possible, especially in doubles where I'm really trying to sync up with my teammates. So I got to yeah. make sure that like I survive just long enough for them to come back so they can cover my ass. But unfortunately, the red team had a different theory in mind there. Still keeping this match uncomfortably close. Strouder, 125%. Not showing any signs of dying anytime soon. And then, sorry. You did that. Yeah, I, I, that was you did, I did that. I did that yeah, that's time. on you. I have one earlier. You have one now. Yeah. Big rest there, but not quite enough to kill just yet. But he's still tacking on damage with that flower on his head. And good lord, how much damage it does. Right now, pretty even. I mean, H-Box at 55 means a lot more than Mario at 15. Wadi has him off stage. I like that too. Ooh, oh to no! Wow, 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 wait a damn minute. He died to that? No, that was messed up. Maybe the switch to Mario was certainly needed. I seen he use the flood to try to push Double Edge Dance a little closer. I could tell this team is a little bit more polished than the Double uh, Roy. Yeah, no question. I just can't believe Wadi died to a Jigglypuff neutral area. He was like sub 100. He was only like 80. How does that happen? Jigglypuff's aerials are messed up. Jeez. Well, needless to say, right now, the yellow team kind of in a bind. Yeah. 
you know, for obvious reasons. But, you know, the great thing about both players on the yellow team is that they are very resilient. But I don't know if you're more resilient, though, than the red team, because I have seen Goblin especially hold on the leads for dear life, making Roy look like the most defensive player in the world. Yeah. Off stage, there's the laser. Nice. Good setup by Wadi. I love the uh, the force into the forward air, but don't think it matters too much. Wadi will, uh, will certainly be giving up the stock soon, I believe. You'll be relinquished of that stock, good sir. That'll yeah, there it. it is. Yes, hand it over. Hand it over, young man. That's right. Put the stocks in the bag. All right. Mario's way better. Yes. Way better. No question. No question to ask. I mean, there are some instances where, like, Double Roy just, like, steamrolls the sure. opposing side. You know, because, again, they are just two juggernaut powerhouses. And they're two characters that also overwhelm really easily. Yeah. Characters being able to press those type of buttons on your shield all the damn time, that's just really damn ridiculous. But, again, you know, these more calm, cool, and collected style characters and doubles like Rob, like Jigglypuff, they know they can't go blow for blow, but they know that they certainly have tools that pick apart combinations like Double Roy. Right, yeah. And you've seen the switch. Now, we talked about mindsets earlier. Like, okay, my opponent switched. We got this. This is one of those cases where you kind of didn't got this. No. Yeah, you didn't. But that's okay, though, because we got three games on our behalf. Yeah. So we got one more here. Wadi and HBox discussing a lot of strategy, which I'm sort of surprised by. I felt like these guys would be somewhat, like, casual, you know? That's right. Um, I, maybe that's just the vibe that both of them give off, that they're just here for a good time. But, no, they want to go further. Right now talking about stages, where they want to go, where they don't. I do think Battlefield was excellent uh, for Schroeder Goblin. Town and City, I do. I, I think this is way better for both Rob and Jigglypuff in a lot of ways. Yeah. A lot more space to really pick their battles. Uh, less vertical combo ability, unless it's you know at certain points of the stage, but you can obviously play around that. Uh, we'll see how things go. I, I like this pick from the yellow team. And then of course, it's like survivability too. I mean, I, sure. I, I'd be lying if I said that. You know, I, I just feel like you know Wadi. So could have maybe held on to his stocks a little bit longer. Well, dude, that neutral air, I, I still can't get over that. That neutral air should not have killed that early. Yeah, that, that definitely, was wild. That had my head spinning, I'm going to be honest. But you know what, though? There is time for adaptability, and we're going to see if they can both play into it. Oh, good Lord. And then, yes, a little late on the save there from Stroder. Oh, dear. That was very unfortunate there. Not the way that Roy especially should be starting off this match, because Roy kind of gets blown up. So yeah, gotta got to survive. Yeah, I feel like the combos are going to be bad for him early, too. But right now, he's doing a good job of holding his stock. He's just, like, doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage. If he can just keep his percent low, try to keep his feet on the ground, don't jump. Because both of these characters will eat alive empty jumps. They're waiting for the ant here, but that's kind of the tough part about Roy and pretty much most of the five move characters. Their approach options are very linear and right. the, the magic starts out a short hop something. They get one hit and then they can really get the, you know, they can really get the fire going. But unfortunately, especially Jigglypuff, you jump incorrectly around her and you know you're going off stage. God, I was saying Goblin has been doing such a good job of not taking any damage. He was at like 12 or 15 for so long. And then just one strength put him up to 44. Well done by Schroeder, though, getting Hungry Box's stock off. But I think because Goblin stayed alive for so long that now it's looking much more doable. Especially with that nice little 2v1 combo there. You know, playing the 2v1 doubles game the way it's supposed to. I got one guy off stage. Probably going to yeah. take him a while to get back. Let's see what Jigglypuff has to say about it. The H-Box really lives and dies by his rests here. Oh my god, the back air clears the board! Okay. Everybody is gone, but this is great for the red team, as Goblin still only 75, now 85% on his second stock. Gotta watch that shield, though. Pound attack chipping away. Okay, yeah, Nair, big enough hitbox to cover himself from behind, despite being turned backwards. Very smart there by H-Box. Starter though, holding down that top platform as proficiently as possible. The imminent threat of Forder, forcing two characters with great recovery systems, mind you, to recover yeah. pretty awkwardly. Honestly, dude, Goblin has been the star of this final game. Goblin lost that first stock out of nowhere and has just been destroying there on out, just burning the stocks alive of the yellow team. Finally, he does lose it out of nowhere, but yeah, you can see yellow team struggling. Wadi only at 87. Uh, I, I mean, like, he's just so high up for being on final stock. 
And Jiggly Puff too, I mean, 55 is not insignificant for such a light character. No, absolutely not, especially with Roy. Now, granted, Roy, uh, you know, Goblin hasn't landed like a lot of F smashes for the most part, you know, getting a lot of these KOs, like, again, due to this, the aerial system that Roy has. Oh, damn. Well? Uh, was that the platform too that he yeah. kind of fell on? Yeah. Wait a minute. It's doable. This is as close as it's ever going to be. Now, if there's ever time for Goblin to kick it into high gear, it is definitely now. Oh, that is unfortunate. Clutch box? How do you win this? Oh, wait a damn minute. Well, that would have certainly been one yeah. win. Yeah. All right, that'll do it. Yeah, up smash out of shield from Super Mario. That'll do it. Yeah, the Mario paying off big for Stroder. Double Roy was certainly not the play, but Mario comes through and makes everything right. That's right as he should in the video game universe. Great stuff right there to all four individuals. Hungry Box, Wadi, of course, two prolific players, and they're always gonna put on the show when they're on yeah. the stream, but, you know, I gotta be honest, you know, Stroder, Goblin, it, that's just a very aggressive ass team, dude. Like, yeah. Mario, Greninja, Roy, Double Roy, like those are very in your face. Uh, and I'm not saying that that's bad, you know, for a players like Hungry Box, but as talented as Hungry Box is, Jigglypuff is certainly Jigglypuff in this game, no matter how bad we want her you to be phenomenal. can't get away from it. No, you can't, man. You can't get away from Jigglypuff doing Jigglypuff things, and that, that's sort of the issue that you run into there, where, I, I mean, I, I feel like as talented as, as Wadi and HBox mm -hmm. are, that's at the right. end of the day, mm -hmm. it's like they just ran into Roy Mario, and they're strong. You know? That's a good team. Yep. Yeah. Good I mean, team, a lot of damage. Kind of forced them into some awkward spots, too, man. Like, again, using Forida right at that top platform, you would think I, I'm – Rob and Jigglypuff, like, I'm I'm okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can work around this. But when you got Mario at the top platform, Roy up underneath, now you're kind of in a pinch. Yes. You're like, I don't yep. want to get F-smashed. I don't even want to get, like, roll onto the stage, turn around F-tilt by Roy at the ledge. And I definitely don't want to get my – just everything forward aired into the oblivion. So. The threats are so – vast and varied mm -hmm. that like that's the issue like they just cover each other so well so well done to Schroeder and Goblin they're gonna move on meanwhile Wadi and HBox is gonna drop down to losers yep but we got another match coming up for you very shortly I'm gonna go take a peek nice hold on hold on this is the real PG okay. stats y'all yeah I was gonna say a little bit of info okay okay oh Gabriel Gabe Smart Epic good Gabe. stuff good stuff yeah. all right Epic Gabe thank you uh, Epic Gabriel and Spargo are taking go. the seat. Nice. Uh, two very young players. Uh, Rob and, I guess, Pyramithra. Spargo mm -hmm. having a hell of a showing at Summit, getting top three. I felt like, genuinely, mm -hmm. I felt like Spargo might win the whole goddamn thing. I think so. Seriously. I, I mean, thought he was going to win Summit. After yeah. Summit, I'm, I'm kind of a betting man, too, in that direction. Yeah. yeah. Spargo is... Uh, very young, mm -hmm. and obviously has a lot to learn in terms of, you know, just sort of experience. That's right. But the talent is undeniable. It's good, and it's only getting better. I remember we all first got hip to Spargo. I think it was like 2018 or 19, and they were like, yo, Spargo's been whooping ass up in SoCal, you know, yeah. beating all the legends. And I'm just like, all right, let me see this kid. Then he showed up to CEO, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, he's nice. Yeah. This wasn't all hype. This just wasn't. Like, you know, people like to clip stuff to Twitter, like the one cool combo. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this is a walking, talking cool combo. He's yeah, this good. is real. That's the thing. I feel like a lot of people just sort of, myself included, when I hear that stuff, I'm like, ah, come on. How, how nice are you? You know what I mean? Like, I, it's just you have a little bit of doubt because you always hear about this stuff. Yeah, right? that, that might be the old man in us. We're just like, yeah, yeah what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What show me that I haven't seen before? That's right. But Spargo has some stuff. Yeah, he has a lot gonna of stuff. We're going to see him very soon. Uh, did not get a chance to see his opponents. Mm -hmm. So we'll see Spargo and Gabriel. I assume, I mean, Gabriel can play a lot of characters, but probably Rob. Meanwhile, Spargo and Pyramithra. Yeah. Uh, taking the character to new heights. I would imagine to be this late in bracket, they're probably going up against somebody pretty damn good. Are they going to be better than Spargo and Gabe? I mean, now that's asking for a lot. Yeah. But it looks like we got, oh, we got Beast and Citadel. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Beast and Citadel. Beast, a uh, prolific Pokemon trainer player from Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. New York. Oh, no, New York. New York, New York. Yeah. Tri-State, whatever. Tri-State. Yeah, you know how they are. Yeah. It's New York. I'm like, yeah. all right, my bad. Meanwhile, on the other side is Citadel. Uh, Going to be playing Ridley. Good luck. Uh, I feel like that's a difficult thing to do in Ultimate 22. I love the view of Ridley and, and Charizard. That's true. Like, together. It looks like Ridley is, he's like the beef jerky. And Charizard is the steak, yeah. you know? Yep, he looks like he's been dried and left out. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I kind of share a similar sentiment with you, bro. Like, you know, when Ridley's getting his ass beat, I'm just like, damn, man, we we fought Sakurai for years, or Sakurai, excuse me, we fought Sakurai yeah. for years for this. But then, like, when it's working, you're like, damn, like, you know, Ridley at top level, Ridley played properly, looks like the best damn character in the game. Yeah, it's just very rare to see that, unfortunately. Let's see, it's a very long button check, but the buttons have been checked, the hands have been warmed, and we're going out to game one very soon. Let's get it. Uh, 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 uh. I hate that song. That's my least favorite victory theme. In the Is game. it really? I hate that one. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite? Uh, it used to be Melee Ness. Yeah. I love Melee Ness because he is like violin. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, dude. I'm going to have to think about it. Uh, oh, Star Fox, maybe. Okay. Fox is nice. Dark Pits is good, too. The dun -dun 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 that was pretty good. Yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's badass because his is the only one like that. The other ones have their own. Yeah. I'm a fan of the banjo one, but I don't get to hear it a lot. You know, banjo's uh, <laughs> not great. No, he's but, not a great guy. You know. All right, next up, uh, we got Mithra and Pyra. Of course, he's going to be leading off with Mithra. Now, one of the things I'm curious about is Pyra, Mithra, and teams. Um, I, the weird thing about this is that when you pick a character, let's say, you know, Mithra is Inkling, right? You have a teammate that's going to do all this damage very quickly, combo like crazy, but not be able to get the kills. Uh, if you have somebody like Pyra, it's like an Ike who can get crazy follow through and a lot of damage and a lot of KOs, but can be very immobile and easy to juggle. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's the mobility for me when it comes to Pyra. Because yes, you know, if she happens to be positioned properly for the fall, that's cool. But Mithra does have a slight advantage in follows because she can literally be every goddamn where at once because she's a much quicker character. Yeah. You know, I, she also just kind of changes the dynamic of like your doubles teammate. Because now your doubles teammate for Rob is like, well, this is cool. I. I know that, like, I'm not going to be the aggressor all the time, but when you switch abruptly, I have to now switch with you. Yeah, that's the thing. And, like, when you look at this, you want to be Pyra for the Charizard, right? Yep, yep, yep. You want to be Pyra for him, but you want to be Mithra for Ridley. That's right. And so you kind of have to do this mental adjustment on your end where, okay, now Mithra is probably better across the board, uh, but not really because now Ridley's getting to that point where the down air might do it. Oh, my God. See, there you go. Yeah. Forward smash huge. Yeah, it is. You know, I said it won't be. It's, it's coming sooner or later. It's just a matter of when at this point. Well, you know what, though? The red team, though, still has a lot of fight left in them. If they can get this stock here off of Gabriel, which, again, is a very daunting task, they'll be good to go. But I think Gabriel certainly knows his role here. He knows that, you know, Spargo is just going to be absolutely bonkers, and I'm just going to hold out on these stocks. I mean, yeah. I might take a stock or two. I might, you know, if I want to get a little handsy, I might. But for the most part, Gyro, uh, Gyro, excuse me, um, you know, laser, uh, tactics like that, you know, these big-ass bodies on the red team can't deal with that for too long. And you just saw it there. Gabriel with some robbery off on the right side, getting rid of Citadel. It was looking so good for the red team. And then out of nowhere, that side B on the side, the rotor arm, there's another one. It's going to punish him for that flare blitz. There you go. And it was looking very good for red team for a moment. And now it's just totally flipped around. That up air from Pyra, just so fast, so strong. Mm -hmm. And that's going to do it. They win. Oh, wait. Hold on. He had three stops. Never he did. mind. He did, I yeah. didn't see Spargo with or, uh, Gabriel with two. Never yeah, mind. Gabriel was going it was not close. Yeah. yeah, no. It wasn't. It was not. It was, <laughs> it was quite the spanking for the red team. Yeah. You know, and uh, we've seen the characters switch. Like, there's, you know, Zelda, Sheik. Um, yeah. God, who else? Pokemon Trainer. Pokemon I mean, Trainer. Yeah. I guess depending on what type of brawl you played, you know, whether it's casual or competitive. Yeah. Samus, Zero Suit Samus. But I just feel like it's. The switches are very lopsided, though, with Pyra and Mithra with these two. Like, Yeah, it's they're the a lot more specialized. Yes, very much so. I mean, even in that final instance right there, like, you have to also, as an opponent, make sure, like, okay, yeah, she hit me in the air, but which one of the two can get up here and hit me at this percent? Right, yeah. Yeah, I feel like with certain characters, so, like, when it was Zelda and Sheik, mm -hmm. Sheik does the damage, and I guess Zelda's supposed to kill, but she was so specialized that she had such small sort of the these kill opportunities with her weird aerials and things mm. like that. So it's like, yep. I, I feel like Zelda didn't really function that way. No. These two function very clearly in that manner. That's you know? right. So here we go. Uh, small battlefield. Oh, my God. Opening Gambit, the photon edge. That's yeah, weird. Seriously, I mean, I guess you want to send a message in a major way. Just don't. 
You gotta watch what type of message you send though, because you know, again, you know, your spar going Epic Gabriel, two of the best players ever pick up the sticks, especially in Ultimate. But this team here that you're going against made it this far for a reason as well. I would imagine they got a couple tricks up their sleeve. Yeah. And as you can see right now, Charles on a 14 taking quite the beating, Whoa. and then it was it, it, it be your own people, Tony. Yeah, it really he, do. It blew up his dragon friend. Good lord, what happened there? That's unfortunate. Tried to forward smash the opponent, got his teammates. Yuck. Yeah, not great. Okay, no forward air right there. Gabriel being very sneaky. Really utilizing the fact that Rob can stay out there for so long. That was such a good up smash from Citadel. Got right under Pyra. Pyra died at 100. Good. That's crazy. Good. Definitely don't need Pyra hanging around these parts here this late at night. Yeah. Up air, yeah. Oh, wow. 102? Wow. That is OD. Yeah, so this is a fast set. Uh, stocks are just getting shaved off. This is nuts. Okay. Up smash. Okay, yeah, that was actually a really good roll. And I, I hate that he even had to say that. Because obviously the better option would just be to hold shield. But I think in an instance like that, you're low on shield. You know that if you're holding it and one side's up smashing, you can bet your bottom down that their opponent is going to come and try to finish the job. Yeah. Love that flamethrower. That was good. Red team has so much stage positioning, but they lost it all there with that laser. You can see, it looks like it might just be a matter of time for the red team. I mean, like, it, it, you know, the stock, they're only down one stock, but they are just so high in percent. And they're such big bodies. It's going to be so hard to maneuver around the stage with Pyre, with Bithra. There's no tech there from Citadel. Beast just stage spiking with the up. The beast is gone now. Yeah. And now Citadel is the last man standing. And that was that smash from Mithra, too. So, you yeah. know, she meant it. Up air. Oh, wrong direction, but we'll still take the damage, though. Ridley, of course, great recovery system for the most part, but it's very linear, though. Covers some good distance. Gets the back air. Okay. I mean, if it wasn't three stocks to one, maybe. Uh, I don't know how Ridley does this. I don't, I don't know what world. Yeah, yeah I, say, I don't think Ridley does this at all, actually. No, I. Like, in fact, <laughs> if I Ridley, had to guess, that's yeah. Right. In fact, Ridley does not does this. Yeah. Ridley, Ridley doesn't do, do anything there, yeah. and that's gonna do it. Beast and Citadel, uh, looking strong at points, having moments, pockets yep. of brightness and shining. Yep. Uh, very small though, because Spargo and Gabriel, good lord, I would not be surprised to see them top five, maybe yeah. top three. I, I can mean, see it. Especially with how great Spargo's been playing, like you know we talked about before the set started. Phenomenal run at BTS, phenomenal run online, and phenomenal literally offline as well. Yeah. And then of course Epic Gabriel, phenomenal singles player. Robin doubles. You know, I think Rob is in some ways he depending can just on do anything. Yeah, he can just do anything, and he's slightly better in doubles depending on who he's teamed with. And I feel like in the hands I of Epic that. Gabriel, yeah, what can't you do? Yeah. No, that's a good point. I feel like it's like he. We were talking before about in doubles how it feels like you can. Um, Accentuate the positives, eliminate negatives. No doubt. Like, Rob is very good at doing the things that he does in singles, but right. it just it magnifies so much in doubles because right. you're able to disrupt with laser. You're able to snipe with laser when people aren't looking at you. You're able to stock tank forever, which we saw repeatedly throughout the day. There's just so much stuff that Rob can do that he can't do or that he can do in singles that just gets so much better in doubles. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, I think we're I think we're actually done. Oh well, it's all right. Do it. Yeah. Well, damn, Coney. I gotta say, man, it has been a blast. I know we kicked As off always. the world tour together, but you know we were at home. I'm glad we're kicking in this person. Is better. This, this is, is better. This yeah, is better. Yeah, I like we're I like having a lot of fun. This is fun, guys. That's thank right. you so much for watching. We're gonna swap out to some other casters, but for now, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. More doubles coming your way soon.